Hello, everyone. Good evening. Boa noite to our Portuguese viewers out there. It is an exciting time for you guys. Welcome back once again to the Season 8 Lumia Marathon Finals, this time, of course, for South America. I am once again Sir Acadia, joined by my brother-in-arms, Mr. Shuvi Senpai. Good evening, brother. How are you doing? Doing pretty good. It is a Saturday, you know, feeling good. It's the start of our weekend here, but we're doing mm -hmm. all right. And I'm super excited for the games here tonight. Yeah, it is going to be a ton of fun after, oh man, after all the action last weekend, we had ERM going, we had the other Season 8 Lumia Marathon finishes going. There has been so much action here going on on Lumia Island. But today, guys, it's going to be a fun one for sure. Of course, let's just get right into it. I'm sure most of you have been here before. We're going to be talking about the overview of the event. If this is your first time, though, or if you do not know, it is a squad format with five rounds of course, the prize pool, a total of $1,200 there. U.S. with the point system, first place getting 32 points, second will be 16, so on and so forth. Four points from the kills in minus four points with the death from non-players. Of course, if you die to something like timer. And Shuvi, would you be so kind as to possibly read over our teams coming up for this event? Of course, you know, we have six wonderful teams that have worked so hard throughout the entire course of the season here to get to where they are here today. Of course, similarly to the last time, this is going to be a squads format. That means we have six overall teams here today. First up is going to be Mementos joining us with Juni, Atresia, as well as Link. No Flame with Superior, Anod, and Frankie Doodle. Narigas with Caius, as well as Leon and Martin H. I have no idea how to say that. You want, you want to try that one, sir? Do you want to try that one? Embatucando. There you go. Embatucando. <laughs> I'll go with that one. I'm going to trust you on that one, sir. Since, uh, of course. Hopefully, you know a little bit more than I do on that one. It means, it means <laughs> drumming. Ooh, there you go. See, I like that name. You know what? I like that name. But they're going to be joined us with Chiron on just as well as Sunshine, losing E-Girls with Lily Petal, Uzma, and Nico Nico Sushi. And the kids going to be rounding out our top six with Seven Strike, Christian, as well as Goal. Yeah, a lot of great teams coming out here. Some of them may be from beyond the borders of South America, but I think that's completely okay for today. They have been playing wonderfully all season in those South American tournaments. We've had a lot of great times, great ups and downs coming out of here. Oh, man, so many great just memories coming from South America. One of my favorite regions, such great players, great people in general. We love them all so much, don't we, Shuvi? They always talk to us. Yeah, we do. And I, I will say, you know, South Asia, uh, not South Asia, oh my goodness, South America, there we go. There is the correct region that I want to talk about. Yeah. South America, ever since kind of like the induction of it, we started seeing them a little bit more in these tournament formats. I have always said that this region is one of the most interesting to look at because while all the international regions outside of South America has a lot of really cool metas going on, I feel like South America has one of those like very unique style of gameplay that really allows for even more outside of the box style gameplay too. Mm -hmm. And because it is squads here today, I would not be surprised if we start seeing any like immensely crazy things coming out from these guys here today. So very much excited to see what our teams are going to be able to bring out here. And we have three whole teams from South America here with us today. Those teams, of course, are going to be the main highlights that I want to be looking at here today. Yeah, exactly. We're really going to be paying attention to those teams more than anything, I want to say. We can't discount our other teams, of course. They're going to be playing at a little bit of a disadvantage when it comes to ping, but that's okay. We know. It honestly, just makes things even more exciting. You know what I mean? Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I think it's kind of fun in that regard, but we will see how they will be doing here. Of course, we're going to be getting into lobby here relatively soon, but I am wondering a lot of what the comps are going to be like. It's been a while uh, since we've been watching South American squads. So, you know, there's been a ton of change ups when it comes to balance. Uh, you know, the patch notes, of course, been throwing us every which way. We oh, had yeah. the balance patch the other day recently. This is our uh, first tournament on the most recent patch, actually, the Vanya patch. So I'm curious to see how those balance changes are going to kind of impact this. Obviously, uh, as they stated in the patch, it wasn't the most... Yeah, flavorful, impactful, whatever you want to call it, you know, in terms of balance changes, just due to the fact they're kind of saving everything for the preseason nine patch. So not really surprised on that end. But is there anything you're kind of looking out for here so far, Shuvi? 
Hmm, well, just kind of remembering the patch off the top of my head, I think one of the biggest things there was the cowboy hat as well as yeah. the upgrade transition into it, which actually start, uh, you know, in the meta like now for Eternal Return, I feel like there's a lot of characters that can actually make use of that item because mm -hmm. it, it kind of fills that one little niche spot that a lot of headpieces didn't have before where you do get attack power, where you do get the attack speed, whereas before most of the time you were kind of stuck with the tactical ops helmet as well as the mithril helm instead where you don't get these offensive style of stats going in with the, you only got the defense health or even just like cooldown reduction alongside the attack speed i'm wondering if that's going to be a factor here today because we are seeing some people here running characters that can make use of additional attack speed as well as attack power on the helmet but there's just so many things you can build it is season eight the amount of item diversification is absolutely off the charts i do wonder if anyone wants to go for the cowboy hat here today and look at our comps out here already. As we can see, we are in the pick phase. Uh, Treja going to be on that Barbara, which, you know, not surprising at all. They are the rank one, I believe, still in South America right now. And they're the best Barbara possibly in the world. They are absolutely disgusting at that character. But the comp I'm interested in is Nargas Team 4 sitting there with Alex, Martina, and Nikki. That's a new one for me. Yeah, you know, I was actually just about to talk about Martina because I was looking at Martin's name and I'm like, hey, you know, if they want to spice things up, they could bring out the Martina. But I decided against it because you know, it's a little bit far-fetched. The recent changes to Martina makes it very difficult for her to get to her very strong part, which is that broadcast form. Now you need 12 stacks instead of the 10 before. And while there were additional changes to make it a little bit easier for you, you can stack off a of body corpse as like a little bit more now compared to before. It's still very difficult. You're going to have to rotate through your ultimate cooldown more than before and that doesn't even guarantee the fact that you're going to stay alive in a lot of those confrontations too so very excited about that one as soon as that martina gets that broadcast for him though that team has a ton of crowd control and lockdown damage on anybody that they really want to go for so as long as martin can do what they want to do throughout the course of the game here that should be an absolutely deadly comp for almost anyone in the game to fight against yeah i'm looking forward to it but of course they're gonna have to look out for some of these other teams that uh, you know the the classics no flame gonna be on their you know just original the the good old you know sua sylvia along with the fiora oozing e-girls as well gonna be joining them except replacing the fiora with a nadine it is gonna be the amp variant of course coming out from lily petal with the red sprite oh man we're gonna have, we are in for some games today how should we yeah, it's a little bit different than what we would normally expect when we come to, you know, I would say joining the fray with South America and NA teams also joining together here as well. But again, this is the kind of gameplay that kind of brings out that unique side of South America. And we can already see here right now as well. Chiron, though, kind of... I will say, you know, for Chiron, this is pretty much his normal, right? Like, he just does what he wants to do on that Nadine, especially with the Adrenaline. He's going to be consistently auto-attacking. He has Anjits on that Leon, especially with the healing factor as well. So that most likely means it's going to be a bit more focused towards the shielding part of the Leon here as well. Just trying to get that Nadine as powered up as possible, safe as possible as well. So, you know, small things here and there. Although, for Oozing E-Girls, they're running something very, you know, kind of standard for what they would usually want to run lily petal as we have noticed before pretty much i call her the american sniper she's so good yeah. at landing those bullseyes <laughs> here but for chiron just wants a little bit more of that consistency consistency throughout the fight whereas lily petal they want to poke a little bit more and then get that one up on the battle before they actually go in not too shabby there shuvi but you know this crafting phase we always talk about these teams and honestly Oh, man, I said it uh, last weekend during the Lumia Marathon finish for the other regions, but just how far we've come throughout the season is, you know, kind of been, it's been a fast season too. I don't know about you, but it's been super fast. I don't know. I'm surprised. We're, we're already halfway through March. You know what I mean? I was like, oh my goodness, into April, it's going to be the end of the year by the time we know it, which I, you know, I don't want it to be, of course, but like, oh man, Eternal Return should be only a few more months until our full release here. <laughs> I'm getting excited, you know. 
Yeah, and it feels like season eight in general has been the type of season for us to kind of understandably not realize that we've already come this far in the season or even in the year because there was just yeah. way too much action packed for you and I, which, you know, of course, you and I are never going to be complaining about. But the fact of the matter is there's just so many things going on here that it's difficult for us to keep track of what the heck is going on as we do see a little bit of early scuffles here, a good garden reverse coming out from Leon. But as soon as they see Niku Niku Sushi, they're going to have to turn tail, but it's not going to matter as Lily Petal picking up an early kill on the Nadine should be an absolutely amazing start there. Martin H will also get taken down. Not exactly sure if they did it, end up getting those stacks. I do see that record off on cooldown right now. Just wasn't sure if it all the way went through. But that's going to be the initiation here. Junie getting taken down, but they do have the play dead access available. Seven Strike going to get taken down here as well. Junie actually dodging against the first attack and the Haymaker too. Goodbye over towards that Jenny getting away from Seven Strike. But this is a Hanu in the early stages of the game. Their main goal here is to try to get that Tree of Life, pushing away everybody as much as possible. Christian trying to do whatever he can. Juni's actually going to get taken down here too. A treasure trying to chase down Christian. Will he be able to get it? One more laser maybe should be enough, but I don't think it's going to be. There we go. Christian should be getting out here. Juni will most likely get picked up, and that's going to be a Tree of Life going over to the Mementos. Yeah, that is very nice for them. Great first fight coming out there. The play dead really saving them there. Juni, just great plays overall. Anot also able to build that Glacial Ice over there. Going straight into the Almas, I'm pretty sure, once they're able to. There it is online. Still needing to finish up that arm piece, but don't worry. That can come to mind at any time. You got, you got, the, you got the RNG piece at this point. It's all good, but now it looks like... A problem again. Hold on. Sunshine going after them right now. That ultimate from Fiora. A bit more damage. Are they going to be able to do it? There it is. Unfortunately, the Yanu will be found this time and going down. But now this time it's on team Mbatu Kambo. Yeah, and you can see the changes to Fiora are really making it a priority for you to actually be popping that fifth hit of the passive on the correct skill that you want to be hitting off of. That outer ring of the Fenty just did like, what, 400 damage just now on the yeah. W, which is not something you see often, especially one with Berg uh not Burgundy, eh? sorry, it was the... Um Oh man, I forget what that item name is called because I don't see it much anymore, but it was that headpiece that gives you the skill damage reduction. Another big fight over in Hospital here. Superior is actually going to be the first one to get taken down. This A not getting taken pretty low here as well. Frankie's just going to try to heal up his teammate as these two from No Flame are going to be completely booking it. Seems like game one is all about the South American team, sir, because they are all dominating the North Americans right now. Yeah, they are going a little bit crazy. Already a killing spree for Atreja. Three kills out there for them. And they're looking possibly for another one. Frankie's trying to run away right now. A not right ahead of him. And man, this is going to be a fun one, like we said. Atreja getting a little bit of poke back damage there. And it looks like we also have our Alpha going it down already down over there to Uzi E girls Martina trying to get some stacks of course believe were they able to just get them yeah. I think and yeah they were able to get them very lovely job but you know Martina and squads we already know what their job is should be run around get some stacks for a while come back and then you are insanely strong they're currently sitting only at four stacks but still stacks are stacks yeah, and the thing is, they kind of readjusted Martina to make sure that her late game is a little bit more kind of um, consistent, right? Because they changed her early game so that in Cobalt, her damage isn't as too tr problematic for teams. But late game, her damage actually, as a matter of fact, I think got increased. Niku Niku Sushi also struggling here a little bit as well. We'll get taken down. So yeah, just like w one at a time, all of our teams that want to be scaling towards late game, we have teams with the Nadine, we have teams with the Martina, they're all getting these small advantages towards the early stages of the game almost on top of sunshine as well like this is not looking good for a lot of our teams right now that don't have that late game snowball unless they do end up having that early game set up and that seems to be a lot of our teams that we usually tend to see succeeding a lot in the early stages especially in north america so we'll see how they manage to kind of cope with that as well throughout the course of the game here christian trying to run away from the no flame squad as he's going to run himself down towards school and the rest of his team will be following through in just a moment as they decide to go to factory but they're gonna have to do this quickly yeah it's gonna be really really fast for them hopefully i do think christine probably gonna run over the hotel or the avenue teleporter go meet up with them asap and i see a martina on our radar again trying to get those stacks 
Oh man, I love watching with Martina. It's so much fun. I think they had just used their ultimate. Don't actually know what ended up happening, but hopefully, hopefully it goes well for them. You know, we love watching Martinez in the late game, especially just I don't know. I I love it personally. I don't know how other people feel about it, but Martinez. I know I complain about Martina a lot, but holy lord, another fight going over here in Forest Juni. Actually, going to go down to those Reign of Arrows. No passive there right now. Link down a bit of trouble. Here's the bike coming in from Nick Mikasushi. She's trying to run at Link. Now they're going to split off. Atreja needs to get out of here right now. They'll be running. But that's two huge kills there for Uzumi Girls. Yeah, and this is the first time our South American Whoa. team is going to be struggling a little bit here. That's going to be a really, really nice F-stop to lock down Sunshine. But there's a lot of low health bars on the side of the kids right now. Christian needs to rest up a little bit, or they might be looking for an angle. A beautiful first attack in towards the Fiora. No parry to speak of at all. On just, however, right on top of these two at the moment. Gold trying to get himself away. A beautiful turn temp attempt there from 7-strike. It's not going to find anybody. And that means a ton of people kind of getting taken down here. But yet again, no real conclusive fights happening pretty consistent from what we have seen so far throughout the course of Lumia season finals here and you know what I mean this is shaping up to be a really great game one and let's look at how many stacks here on Martin it is night number two only night seven time. stacks so it's not the greatest that you could be asking for there at the moment for Martin, but we'll find two more as they do get one on that meter right now as well they're gonna get taken down here yet again now three more stacks left on Martin there should be a lot of corpses flailing about in the rest of the map right now but it is almost day number three. Any more deaths and they're not going to be able to revive here. So Martin's running out of time. Yeah, hopefully they will be able to get it. Like you said, not a lot left. Uh-oh, Frankie and Superior. I don't know where is Oh, man, actually. I see Anoth's trying to get on in the back line right now. Well, those two are going to be fighting themselves. I see Andre's taking out to a quarter health right now. I see Uzi going down somewhere else as well. Well, wow, holy lord, Sunshine having to run away. Anji and you Iron not able to do a lot there. Oh my goodness, the damage coming out from No Flame. Kind of what we expected, but still, Shuvi. <laughs> Yeah, throughout the whole course of that fight, Frankie used Radar Gun twice, and it healed literally all the damage that Superior took throughout the whole course of that fight. So you can see how much sustainability there is, and the moment you let your backline just get kind of jumped like that by the Fiora that's already running almost, they're going to get taken down most likely. You just have no answers for the rest of the frontline too, so I think that should be a bit more of a wake-up call here for that team to figure out how they're going to have to deal with this, uh, what is it? Uh, the Sylvia as well as mm -hmm. the Suo composition because whatever they just did over in Factory was definitely not it But again, good wake-up call at a really nice time because now that it's day three You know now you have no more res attempts here At least they fought right around that night two mark before they had that last chance to fight Now here we go like you said day three online no more revives at all all of our teams coming up we have Martin coming up once again. Of course, let's hope the Martina is going to be able to do enough. I'm really praying for them. Still at those nine stacks. It's going to be a little hard. They need to find those dead bodies and fast, Shuvi. Having a Martina scale not have it. Oh my goodness, here we go. Here's a fight. Oh no, I switched one. I think accidentally auto attacked the camera there. And now Christian, there's the half stop. Going to be able to just a little bit, but is it going to be enough? They're all trying to fight out right now. Ooh. There's the reflect damage going on to 7 Strike, I believe. Sunshine, Coup de Gras from Ghoul looking for anything there. I don't believe it's really going to be able to find much oh, Duck Dive as well. God. Oh, wow. 7 Strike going down as well as Ghoul now. Not what you want to see. Our first very big impactful fight of this game. Christian, unfortunately, going to have to run away for themselves is our very first single player here in game Let's one. On that. that was such a good fight, though. I mean, Chiron did everything correctly as Nadine, yeah. dodging out on literally everything that the Hyunwoo and the Yuki wanted to do. That was a beautiful reflect to dodge out on the damage there. The Tonfa skill making use of it right now here on top of it on just doing everything correctly. And Sunshine sitting up in the front line as that Fiora just kind of dissuading the Nathapon from ever jumping on the Nadine, too. Like, this is a team fight that you are looking out for and that's the team fight that you do want to be seeing especially at this stage in the game so a great setup right now seven kills on that team at the moment too and for the kids three kills so far in game number one and it, you have to kind of think that that is going to be the end of it for this game for them
Yeah, it's going to be a little bit hard. Hopefully, Christian able to get some good placement points there coming out, which can be impactful on the scoreboard as well. Three points, like you said, not too bad at all. See you. Let's see what they're going to be able to do. Everybody's kind of moving around the map right now. We can see Christian trying to hide from everybody. The camera will spot him, I believe, the Martina, but it doesn't look like they're going to be turning at all for him. Now a fight over here in Forest. Anjit, so much damage coming out. My god. Now they're going to have to be on the run as fast as possible. Sunshine. Oh my goodness, the damage. I don't think they're going to be able to get out. The oh, the pair. It hits the light, though. It hits the light. That is un. Fortunate Mbatu Gondo losing one of their big damage sources there in the Fiora. That is unfortunate. But now it looks like they're going to be found by Christian again, kind of in a way third partied over here by Team Nargas. Oh my god. <laughs> Dude, this really sucks for a lot of our teams here, man. Like, as a, up against the Sylvia as well as the Sua, you can't run from that. So at this stage of the game, you have to fight into them and you have to win. Any mistakes are not going to be tolerated at all from these teams. And the moment they yeah. want to chase, you have a Sylvia with their gauge just constantly coming up. You have a Sua consistently chasing you down as well. There is no room for error for these guys. But as the game goes on, the Sylvia and the Sua teams just get stronger and stronger and stronger. You have to deal with them one way or another regardless of whether or not you want to. So, Forest now becoming an absolute death trap for a lot of these teams as we have two of the teams that I'm talking about here sitting inside the snow zone. Niko Niko Sushi absolutely terrifying on that Sylvia right now. I do wonder what Frank is looking like as well. These two teams have been very, very quiet throughout the course of the game, but again, their lethality kinds of come oh. kind of coming towards the later stages of the game. Yeah, it's the same thing for Frankie too. This is this is scary, man. <laughs> Yeah, it is really scary to go up against them right now, but let's see who's oh. actually going to do it. They're actually doing Wick, but I think that just means they're going to hand it right into the loving arms of No Flame. Only 3,000 health. We do see oozing Egros here as well, and we have, I believe, that is, that's going to be Mementos pulling up as well. Oh Who's going to be able to secure it? Three teams here. Superior trying to get it right now. They're trying to pull Wick back, but it is not going to happen, unfortunately. That's no flame. A second VF blood for them. That is Wick a line. Oh, no. Link now in a bit of an unfortunate place here, but I think think no flame doesn't want it at the moment not knowing where these other teams are positioning themselves which i think is a fair call but oh my god shuvi hey if anything that's a good uh that's a good setup for you and i because that means a lot of our teams here their priority is going to be that wiggling and it sets up a really nice arc for you and i they kind of talk about throughout the course of the games here tonight we have a total of five and a lot of our teams should be focusing down that objective and it's a good thing here right we see no flame always being on top of that objective almost no contestion in a lot of our squads games here but this time around it's going to be a bit more interesting than that so i do love to see that and there it is chiron sitting on that upgraded cowboys hat as well like this is this is a game this is a game in 0 0.0 uh, in 0 0.80 yeah it is crazy and i believe i'm trying to remember the name of it already isn't it the uh, what is it star of the west thing there you go <laughs> i keep star seeing the I west. Keep star spangled banner bomb like, that's <laughs> <laughs> oh but here we go leon actually deciding to go in we do have martina on that broadcast form as well which is what we wanted to see finally and I'm excited for it. This is where Nargos starts really kicking off against the rest of these teams. Not really having anything early, unfortunately. Of course, they were trying to get that Martina online. Now, let's see if they're going to be able to do anything with it. You know, they invest a lot of time and resources. Not really resources, because it's just Martina kind of running it. But, you know, of course, they're just investing that time to wait for Martina. You're kind of relying on that player to be able to do something. And let's hope they're going to be able to pull it off or else... I don't know if they're going to want to run it again. And here we go, actually. Uzma, so much damage there, actually. That's what we talked about. Committed the EMP as well. So it's a little rough now if they want to take another fight. They still have Nikki, but I don't know if it's going to be enough. Meanwhile, it looks like Mentos actually going to chase down Anjis here on the Leon. And I believe that is a done deal right there. Batukondo losing another one of their players. And here we go. Another fight, Shuvi. 
Oh, this could be pretty big. We don't have the EMP oh. rod. The damage is just way too massive. The lockdown potential way too high. Leon's gonna get taken down here, but the oh. damage on the Lily Petal, the broadcasting hit the middle form onto the Nadine. That's way too much damage. Uzma in a little bit of trouble here as well. He's gonna be trying to run away. He is the Sua, but Kai's is on the chase right now. The additional damage buffs over onto the Alex might cause a little bit of issues for Uzma, but they are a Sua regardless. Trying their best to run away, but going straight into a death wall as they're gonna be stuck inside of the restricted areas and when you're the last one alive that's not a good news at all Uzma will have to run into the red eat a lot of timer but a beautiful fight from team Nautigas and this is what we wanted to see from a Martina that hit that broadcast form and we saw it perfectly oh how wonderful was that I loved it so much but now another huge fight looks like Frankie and them want this a traitor trying to do as much damage as possible oh. a not having to use the parry oh. is gonna be the first one to go down in this fight everybody else on mementos right now sitting at half health Sapir trying to put out as much damage as possible play dead is out there One more play dead for Juni unfortunately they're gonna have to kite this insanely well there's so much healing and everything going on right now do they have the damage to amputate is out of Treja? I don't think has the damage wick buff for these characters doing so much, UV. Holy! No mistake is what I said, and they made too many mistakes. It was a beautiful kill up against Anod. I will definitely say that, but then afterwards, you gotta kill the Sylvia, but they went for the Suo instead, and that's such a big mistake here. The sustain from the Sylvia is still way too much for these teams to deal with right now, even with the healing cut. So a massive loss there, I will say, for Team Mementos. It was a great fight that they fought, but the end result was not in their favor at that point. And we do hit our final zone, as it is going to be school here. 55 seconds until we do start hitting that temp zone. The Trays are trying to revive their teammate to no avail. Juni will get taken down here, and that means we have two full teams left. It's gonna be Narigas as well as Team No Flame. I mean, this is the fight that I've been wanting to see yeah. right now, right? How can Mar Martina actually hold up against all of these guys? Uzma is gonna feel the pain of that as well. Superior just kind of you know, dashing a little bit in towards the corner there. That, that's understandable. Sometimes those pixels are a little bit pesky. So, cool things there. Uzma will keep himself a little bit alive for a bit longer here. But again, more timer being burnt by our solo players. Not looking good at all. Oh, now Uzma getting caught out there by Nargas. Let's see. No more dashes left. Of course, not going to get stunned up or anything. Because, you know, that is just how it works. Uzma still taking a lot of damage there. It's almost, oh, just so close, Uzma. They will commit the Martin ult. But, of course, that ultimate is on such an insanely low cooldown that it doesn't really matter right now. They're going to be getting into the zone. Maybe they chased a little bit too far there. As we can see, Leon only having 13 seconds of timer left. So, oh, God, here we go. Atreja is going to pull up Uzma as well. Only a few seconds left. They need to actually get that timer right there. They will be getting it. Uzma is going to pop even with totem oh. and now it's is here as well that is another kill for nargas but guess who's walking over we see no flame uh-oh leon you guys gotta run right now here we go 40 seconds for all of them leon only has five seconds of timer oh, this is no. so unfortunate there's the emp as well martina's trying to get off as oh. much damage as possible but it's just not enough it was a timer diff no flame your winners of game number one shuvi Oh man, that was such a good fight taken from Nargas too, but yeah, yeah exactly as you said, timer is the big issue there, and to be fair as well, a very tight corridor where ultimates have already been blown just to knock down the Treja, yeah. and the Treja did too, too much damage over on the side of Nargas, that's such a thin corridor where Barbara oh. can constantly throw out those lasers, and... I mean, at that point, you kind of have to call it quits, right? <laughs> you can yeah. only fight for too long, especially as that team, especially when you have Alex as well. And, you know, for what it is, he did hold on to the EMP barrage and he did use it at the end, yeah. but the health bars were way too it low was, at that point. So It was just so unfortunate there. No flame coming in at quite literally the perfect time right there yeah. to just swoop in, get all those kills. But of course, man, that was still a great game from all of our players. Wow, everybody looking so fantastic uh, you just love to see game ones like that everybody's on their a game ready to go so many fantastic fights to talk about we had nargas with the martina actually coming out still huge which you wanted to see it was a little bit of a timer difference more than anything unfortunately there for them but just so much great action there out of game one. Oh man, it's going to be a fun day again, huh, Shuvi? Yeah, and I was worried for Team Nargas, especially after Martin that didn't hit that broadcast form post-day number three, but they managed to, you know, 
get those three final stacks that they managed to get at the end of the game. And you can see how much damage that Martin was actually outputting with that Martina as soon as they hit that broadcast form as well. You cannot let that happen as a lot of other teams. Yeah. And they tried to prevent it for the most part. But you know what? The amount of dead corpses on the ground, especially in squads when infinite yeah. revives are on until day number three, you have a lot of leniency as that Martina. And it seems like it was just barely enough for Team Naragas to get that Martina to that point, which, you know, in the end, definitely helped there. You swap over onto the VICG after mm -hmm. hitting that broadcast form. Oh my god, the damage coming out from that character is insane. Yeah, exactly. It just goes up exponentially, doesn't it now, Shuvi? And I believe we do have our scores ready. And, um, oh, man, they were cooking in the oven there for a while. And don't forget, <laughs> guys, the scores, of course, are not going to be there numerically properly just because it is due to how the circuit points. Everybody got seated and everything. So, you know, it's not it's going to maybe look a little weird to you guys. But of course, like we said, Mementos had the most circuit points, so they will be going first on the scoreboard. But in first place currently right now with 76 points, there is no flame in second will be using Eagles. We actually have a three way tie for second place between oozing e-girls mementos and nargas all with 32 points and batucando sitting there with 29 points and then the kids in sixth with 14 points i don't remember the last time i've seen a three-way tie for second of course that is going to get changed there after game two but uh wow a three-way tie after game one yeah, that is a fun one. And this really kind of goes to show that even if you don't really have good placement, getting those kills really matters here. And especially yeah. for, you know, for No Flame, who got first and 11 kills on top of it, you can see how big the difference is between them and any of the other teams, more than double the points of second yeah. place right now. And of course, that won't stay consistent throughout the whole course of the event here. Or maybe they will, because No Flame is one of those teams that definitely loves to kind of take that tidal wave and just kind of ride it all the way till the end of the tournament but mm -hmm. this is a south american region and we saw how well those south american teams were holding up to our north american teams in the first few minutes of the game if they can carry that title wave all the way to the end of each individual game then maybe the north american tide is going to get cut short and we'll see south yeah. america taking their own tournament Hey, I'm ready for it. That's what I'm hoping for here. We need our Brazilian players to get on yeah. up to the stage and do their thing. Like we said, you know I love watching them so much, Shuvi. And let's get right into our picks for game number two. I don't believe we're going to have any changes at all. Everybody looked really comfortable there. And as far as I can see, and yeah, I just believe it's going to be no changes whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, there absolutely doesn't have to be at all. All of our teams here. And uh, you know what? For what it is, I thought a lot of these teams were going to be very ultimate reliant, but it doesn't seem to be the case. They know how to rotate through all of their skills individually to not have to rely on any of them. And even for Chiron as well as the Lily Petal, where, you know, Wolf Assault is usually the time, and they also tend to hold on to that utility until the very moment they actually need it, which these two are so good at doing. They're willing to fight outside of those regions as well. They're willing to fight when they I think they have the opportunity to do so they're the ones looking for opportunities trying to make sure that they're fighting on their own terms this is what I love to see here and the fact that we're seeing all the same comps they're confident in these <clears throat> yeah honestly I don't expect many differences like you said coming out today everybody is really confident when it comes to the characters that they're playing i don't think we're gonna see no flame at oozing e-girls maybe actually oozing e-girls might change out the nadine because i believe they like the ar aya we mm -hmm. did see that in the north american finals so would not surprise me if something like that came out as far as no flame uh like i was saying i don't think we're gonna be seeing anything different out of them as far as some of the south american teams i know a just most likely not going to change at all off that Barbara, of course. Uh, but, you know, that's completely fun with me. Uh, I sometimes really like it. You know, I know a lot of people are like, oh, well, nobody's changing, t you know, nobody's changing characters. It, you know, it's kind of boring to watch the same character. But the whole thing is, you know, these people are the best at them. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. great to watch them just do their thing, basically, on these characters. I don't know. That's kind of how I feel personally about it. I'm completely fine with it. But let's see what happens with the rest of the day. Yeah, and even for people like Anod who plays a lot of different characters, they play those characters to the top of the levels when you when it comes down to it. So I have absolutely no qualms about watching people like that, being able to play characters like the Fiora. So, you know, it's exactly as you mentioned. The, the games that you're going to get are so high class that in the long run, it's not really going to matter. And we saw after game number one that 
all of these fights are really, really close. None of them were kind of game ending for any of these guys until like post, I think, day number four. The ones over in day three were definitely game defining, especially for the kids as well as in Batikondo, but. You know, those were fights that could have gone either way with just small, minute, micro decisions. That's what it really comes down to in the end. So, you know, this is what we want to watch, right? It's just good games of Eternal Return. Yeah, exactly. I am here for it. So many great things coming out recently. And man, we have less than two weeks left of the season, Shuby. It's crazy. Oh. Like, you know, I talked about it last game that we've come this far. But yeah, guys, don't forget to get those ranked games in, of course, to get your goals. If you want to get gold, silver, diamond, platinum, heck, immortal, do whatever you want to do. You know what I mean? The, the Lumio Island is open and ready for you guys. If you want that Echion skin as well, which, you know, I believe was uh, shown again the other day. It looks really nice to get that Echion. Yeah, and, and you know what? I feel like the art is, it just kind of re resembles the art style from yeah. Black Survival, which I actually yep. like. <laughs> I do agree. It really did remind me of that. I was like, this looks both old and new at the same time. You know what I mean? Like, not in a bad way at all, of course, but I really loved it personally. It is one of my favorite arts that I've seen for any of the cadet skins, if not my favorite so far. I really like it. And now, you know, I, I hope the uh, the effects are really nice. You know, you have that, uh like, the, the golden VF, I guess you could say, for Echion yeah, on this, yeah, yeah. which I'm excited for. It's going to be so nice, Shuvi. Oh, yeah. And for all of these guys, it should almost be guaranteed at this point that they're able to get it, right? Mm -hmm. They're just playing so well that, you know, their skill levels, like, we don't even have to look at their rank. They're definitely gold or higher at this point. Oh, of course. <laughs> they are. Yeah. If they yeah. aren't, I'd be rioting, man. <laughs> who do you think is uh, who do you think is going to be the cadet for next season? Oh, that's a oh. difficult one. I didn't even Whoa. expect. Oh, oh, my God. Wait, this is actually pretty big. Sunshine's even joining the fray here as well. This could be really bad for Team Gold oh, right now. Superior getting... Oh, he's going to take it down. Frankie's stuck in the middle of everyone here, too. Oh, my no God. Flame's oh, he's gone. Good. No Flame is dead. No Flame is gone. That is the first Team God oh, here. Oh, hey, that's oh. how you deal with that team over at Tree of Life. All you have to do is just sandwich them. Two South American teams just say, no, you are not taking that Tree of Life for free this time around and knock them out of the game completely. A beautiful sandwich coming down from Momentos as well as a Batucado. And goodbye to one of our North American teams for game number two. What the heck? That was surprising. What happened, Juvi? They got third partied. That that is the definition of a third party. We saw Mbato Kondo teleport in. And the second I saw that, I was like, oh, it is done unfortunately there for no flame wow it looks like one of our second place victors is now gonna have to work their way up for that first place juvie oh dude this is this is so good for every single one of our other teams right now because remember sir we had a three-way tie for second place and their performance wasn't even that bad either right like the point density wasn't even all that favored towards no flame at all so this is a really really big opportunity that all of our teams in this game can definitely take advantage of so a beautiful set of events that happened for for our uh, kind of homeland players of South America, and that's exactly what you want to see. We always talk about finding answers to things, but that is an answer and a half if I've ever seen one. Yeah, that was in Dane. Oh my goodness. Like you said, it is the, the great no flame question. How will it be answered? Answer South America. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't seen that happen in any other regions other than this one. That was that was beautiful. Welcome to Brazil, guys. We're sending you there, and you got sent hard. We also have 10 seconds. Here we go. Possibly another fight. Ghoul going to be teleporting on in to possibly help his teammates out there. Sunshine going to be using that parry. That's a lot of damage, though. F-stop out as well. They have a little bit of an opportunity here. The coup de gras, it's going to hit. That's actually going to be on Jeets going down first. It is a battle zone now, so these players are going to revive, of course. Chiron going down as well, but now Sunshine is going to be taken down. That's about the condo down, but guess what? Unfortunately, the kids were in the wrong place at the wrong time. They are now going to die as well, but that doesn't mean a free battle zone just yet. Martin's here trying to get off as many stacks as possible. Oh, poor Martin. Let's go, brother. Can you do it? Martin. They should be able to get a couple more too. I mean, they're sitting on yeah. eight. That's way better than last game too. And by the way, I don't think I've ever seen a Barba overdrive onto their turret get two kills like that at once. But Atreja just knocked out both Christian and Seven Strike in that fight. That was the funniest thing to watch. Oh my god. <laughs>
And there we go. There's there some go. more Warp. stacks for the Martina. And it looks like maybe they'll try and get one more, I believe. But now they're actually going to try and fight, get a little bit of mastery off it. There's the play dead out right now. Martina actually trying to do as much as possible. Not ah. actually go down. No, shoot me. Maybe one kill. No, but that's still, uh, honestly, I believe, what, four stacks there? Yeah. Uh, in the battle zone, not too bad at all. Nargoth's going to come back. They'll get online faster than usual, which I think would be a great boon for them. Yeah, imagine grouping up as you're grouping up with your teammates early game and uh, getting a couple of stacks as a Martina. Well, that's what battle zones allow you to do now. And you know what? A great opportunity taken here from that team. Nautica is getting a really, really good start and a really, really solid start for Martina as well. And she just hit broadcast, broadcast as soon as she revived as well. This is a very, very early broadcast. I don't think we've even seen this fast except for like once in ERM. Sunshine's going to get taken down here as well. I'm just trying his best to run. Martina is by themselves, but at this point, like, they've Already hit the broadcast they don't care at all they don't have the VICG just yet but they've already reached the point where they want to they don't have to bother going for those snacks anymore they can get those kills if they want to Chiron's gonna get taken down here as well but oh this is looking good for Nargus and you know what's actually funny here uh the Martina nerfs that happened this patch are gonna come in oh a little oh my god yeah because they are not level 11 yet so that level one ultimate still a bit weaker they're gonna hit level 11 pretty soon but for for the next half second those uh those Martina nerfs are gonna go, come in a little Dude, that's bit uh so funny yeah. <laughs> yeah, the Martina nerfs did happen, if you guys are unaware. They did decrease the ultimate damage at the lower level, but they actually increased it, I believe, by 60 base damage at level 16, if I'm not, uh, if I'm not yeah. mistaken. I think it went from 300 to 360 or something like that, which is, whew, that's a lot of damage there, but... Link. Let's see how they're gonna do this, actually. Link might need a little bit of time just to get some health back, but... They will be ticking food, of course. 30 per second, 31, 30, somewhere around there, you know, low 30s. Now they're gonna decide to go in. Uzma, using the shield on themselves. Nico popping the diamond shard. She's gonna try and back up. Lily Petal looking for a bull. Let's see, they're landing. Link actually trying to go in on this possibly, but Uzma's gonna be the one to engage and Link going down like it's nothing. There's the acceptance speech as well going out. And I don't know if they're gonna be able to survive this one, Shuvi. It's gonna be hard. Nico, she is going crazy on that Sylvia. And they're gonna have that bike. There's the red carpet as well. Now they're all gonna try and run. They have to separate here. And Nico they're going after Atreja, Shuvi. I don't know if the cooldowns are there for poor Atreja. There's the radar gun as well. And it looks like actually Juni gonna be able to live for themselves right now. So that is Memento seeing to live another day. Yeah, I mean, dude, that was such a good fight taken there from oozing e-girls. And again, as I said before, you can't make mistakes when you're fighting up against these Sylvia and Sua comps. You're never going to be able to run away from them, or for a good part, you're going to lose yet another person. And the fact of the matter is, the frailty was popped a little bit too early from the side of Link. And once you lose that, your damage potential is way too low. Link got hit by a couple of those Odysseys, and then immediately just goes in by that, um, nice. by the Sua as well. Uzma just kind of frontlining that fight as best as they can and afterwards it's just free pickings for the rest of their team so good stuff coming out from oozing e girls they even managed to secure the tree of life that they were fighting for as well so a massive team fight that they managed to take here and a solid mid game set now for that team as they're going to call in i think yet another one or maybe they just kind of gave it to Nico Nico Sushi. We'll see what they go with that. Yeah, let's see. Oh, oh actually going in hard already. The oh. Diamond Shard is pop. Oh. The three man oh. insane. Are they going to be able to do anything with it though? Oh uh, my oh, God. But damage from Martina coming out. Oh my God. They were able to turn the three man F stop. Christian going to be going down. It's day three as well, but it's a battle zone now. So, you know, they're going to come back, of course. But still, oh my goodness, Shuvi. Look at this. Martin actually going down as well. And this is Ambato Kondo just going to be chasing them like crazy. Uh, how Kai's didn't go inside of the battle zone. That means that Alex is just yeah. not there at all. It's a 2v2v3 at this point. And Leon's going to get taken down here as well. Chiron should be able to pick this up or whatever the rest of it can be. Who knows at this point. The Nathapon slowly but surely farming their own stuff over towards the wolf area. They're just trying to stay alive as long as they can. There we go. Leon gets taken down here. Seven strike. Their timer is going. They don't have any more answers towards that team. And they will pop in just a moment here as well. Not able to pick up a kill either. So good stuff coming out there for Imbatkado, and I will say, you know what? 
I mean, I really thought that this Martina was going to be doing amazing, but they have gone over my expectations with how amazing they're doing on that character right now. Martin just giving us a show. Yeah, great job to them, honestly. They are recording the show at the same time, huh, Shuvi? Yeah. But, uh, man, I am honestly excited. You know, Nathan Vaughn was able to get a uh, little little bit of mastery there. Seven strike, I think that was the th that was probably the play, of course, in that battle zone. But now I'm curious as to how the rest of this lobby is going to function. And Bato Kondo is probably going to be the team that really needs to get up there right now. Mementos as well. You know, after a crazy ending to the last game, I am kind of wondering who is going to come up in that first place. Memento, Nargas, and Uzi Eagle were the ones with all the... Oh my goodness, what is happening here in archery? That is a huge Yuki ultimate over there. The coup de gras coming on out. It looks like Mementos doesn't really want anything else right now. Having all those kills and everything, they're trying to save it a little bit. Don't know how many of those are going to be battle zone kills right now, but we are... They, I believe they're going to be the team that might come out on top after this, depending on how many placement points they get. I'm about to condo, though as well they weren't in tie for a second but they were only three points below so at that point that's not even that much yeah they're effectively second at this point too i mean look at the amount of kills that they have and you know they just got a ton of them off of the battle zone over in hotel because they were able to pick off a couple of stragglers that just kind of came along their way but again it's in the dean right they're still scaling towards the latter stages of the game there's still plenty of prey left for them in this game alive too only one team gone and it was team no flame that fell down in the first couple minutes of the game holy crap that is not exactly the bullseye that you want to be seeing here. Juni going to get taken down really low. They need to build up those stacks so that they can at least go into the play that if, the, if it comes down to that. Atresia all over the place. Link exactly the same case is here as well. Juni is going to get taken down. No play that available for that person this time around. Chiron eating a lot of damage for themselves. But again, this is the poking game that Lily Petal wants to go for. And it seems like they are able to push away a lot of people. The items on this Nadine absolutely ballistic here as well. Yeah, it is crazy. Now they're going to be going for Wick. Let's see who else is going to be there for it. Oh, man, this is going to be... This is going to be close, I feel like, Shuvi. It's going to be really close. Hold on. There goes the aggro as well, but they got hit by the bullseye. Unfortunately, Sunshine going to be sitting there around half health. We also see Mementos here. Everybody's trying to take this Wick. Who is actually going to be able to take it? They will oh. aggro it. Oh, it's only a 2,000 health at this point. Oh, if they just do a little bit of damage to it, they can get away with it. The Great Heist! Oh. And that will be Mbatsu Kondo grabbing it. But are they going to be able to get out is the God. question. Anjits is super low. This is going to be really close. They get hit. Oh, no, Shuvi. Oh. I don't know. Actually, the Duck Dive is allowing them to get out. Oh, my God! Sunshine has Diamond Shark. Oh, my God. It looks like they're actually going to be able to get away with it. They got away with murder, and Lily Petal falls along suit as well. Link and Atreja yeah. trying to knock the rest of that team down here as well. We will get stunned multiple times, but look at the damage that Uzma is taking. Wow. It's not going to be enough. Atreja and the Link knocking down two members of Team Uzi <clears throat> Eagles. And oh my god, the two-man squad after Juni falls. They are still inactive right now. They are picking up items from Lily Petal. A ton of amplification going down for both of these two players, who also want amplification items too. So now Niko Niko Sushi, the last remaining alive over on Oozing Eagles, but look at Team Mbatu Kondo. They just got away with murder at this point, wickling the items, and then they get away with their lives too. This is absolutely incredible as Niku Niku Sushi has to burn their own timer to try to get themselves away. I mean, this is just not what you want to be seeing here from Oozing Eagles. Yeah, it's really unfortunate there. Oh, man, the what is happening, Shuvi? This game really got flipped upside down with those two picks. Great job to Mementos, especially. We usually see two players not able to do that much, but, oh, this might be the end of them if they are going to get chased like this by the kids. But, yeah, that was just crazy. Able to take down Uzma and Lily Petal just like that while the wick was going on. That is insane. <laughs> Dodging out on the F-stop as well. Let's see if they're going to be able to get out. The dash is ready from Link and everything, but Christian is running at them like a train, Shuvi. It's disgusting. It looks like they might actually just try and decide to turn and fight here. A lot of damage actually on the goal. Christian in the back. Now, what is this? Oh my god, the damage. They're actually forced to back off. 
what is this man Link in the tree? Dude, imagine if Junie still was alive, right? The amount of damage yeah. and pressure that Atresia and Link is already putting out. That was without emergency surgery, by the way. Junie, the overdrive, and this could be a huge fight as long as Link is able to do things, but they are oh. not able to, getting hit directly by the Martina. And this is the lockdown that we do want to be seeing coming out from this team. But now they're stuck in a corner right now without a lot of ultimates. EMP Barrage has been invested deeply to Kasushi, sitting in the corner, also buying a little bit more time for Sunshine to catch up. But that's going to be the broadcast coming through. I don't know how that stun actually landed over onto Sunshine, but Sunshine, maybe you're going a little bit too far by yourself, buddy. The parry is pretty good. A lot of damage coming out with the Venti as well and the Flays, but that's not going to be enough. There we go, all over the place. Chiron's going to get taken down here as well. I'm just absolutely nowhere to be seen, and that's a little bit over aggression and a little bit too much push there from Sunshine, and it seems like our Wick team going to get taken down here. Yeah, that is unfortunate as well with all those kills right now. That is really sad. And now it looks like our two full teams left are Nargas and the kids. That is just crazy. What a game, Shuvi. This is just like, this game is everywhere. It's insanity. I I, <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's going to come down. Is it? Wait, is it a school final zone again? It is, and this is going to be so sad, especially for our melee players. They're not going to have that many way out, and Anjic trying his best to get away here too, but that f-stop is going to land, and we just saw that they used their skill too. Anjic trying his best, but there is nowhere left to go yeah. for that Leon. Goodbye to Mbaticado, and our Wick team just falling apart, especially after the lead that they just managed to pick up for themselves. It's Sushi, oh my god, staying alive by themselves wow. here too. Oh my goodness, she will just just barely get out of vision of this team on our screen. Narigas, the one that is honestly at this point, in my opinion, very well favored to take the game because of how strong this Martina is going to be and how early this Martina was able to set up. So the kids have a lot of work to do in the remainder of this game. I do wonder what their timer is looking like. 15 seconds on Kai, so it's not looking good yet again. But there's not that many teams left in this game. So those stragglers, as long as they're able to knock them down early and not lose any more timer, they should be completely fine here in the next couple of moments. Exactly. 30 seconds until these zones close as well. Oh man, it's going to be close. Hopefully it is not another timer scam this game, <laughs> Shuvi. Oh. That was really unfortunate last time. And I see Christian with 30 seconds on their timer though. So let's see what ends up happening. Everybody's going to be taking their places here. Nargas deciding where they want to go. If it's going to be in the school or in the gym building. Oh, this is going to be fun. Two seconds. Here we go. It is going to close up and here we go, Shuvi. Final zone gonna be able to do it a treasure walking around not knowing where to go right now just all these teams gonna be outside the zone seven strike trying to actually just zone them out of there it's gonna be a little hard for a treasure to walk in the kids will be setting up in the gym a treasure gonna be right around the corner not a lot of time left for them though unfortunately only 13 seconds they're gonna have to find a way in here before it's too late i believe nika nika sushi she's trying to also get on the other side of school we can see the health bar at the bottom about to drop it looks like yeah there goes nico falling down to nargas and Let's see who a treasure will actually fall to, if it's going to be the kids or if it's going to be Nargas. This is going to be fun. I mean, Atreja is just kind of running around the world at this yeah. point. They managed to stay alive, so you know what? Third place at this point, better than what they, I feel like, should have been getting considering how pressured they were by the kids right now. And they're going to be able to knock down Atreja. So, three seconds left. We do have the temp zones that did pop here. But for the kids right now, they do have ample amount of time, but they don't know about the timer on the side of Team Nargos. They will just go back directly inside of their own temporary zone. As let's take a look at how these teams are oriented right i mean we see that alex he does have the devil's marksman as well as the totem martina is sitting on three transitions with weapon level 18 and the vicg that we would normally expect leon sitting on an incredible set of items as his frontline nikki as well but on the side of the kids i mean these items are pretty solid on their side too except i will say seven strike missing out on that ultraviolet might kind of lack a lot of the damage that we are looking from the snap upon as he's gonna have to land a lot of crucial skills to try to lock down the front line of team Naragos in that final zone let's see what they're gonna be able to do 15 seconds left this is gonna be so close Shuvi. i'm like oh man na versus sa the final fight again you know what i mean it's gonna be let's oh this is gonna be so close 
I'm praying for Nagas. They're going to move early over to the console, trying to get a little bit of just, you know, they're trying to be proactive with it, of course. They're going to be set up the cameras and everything, trying to take down the animals around, not wanting any, any, any third parties from these, you know, large animals, the dog and the bat, you know, the amount of damage that they do, shoot, we could be really a game changer, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, definitely. Dude, how many traps does our South American team have right now? Because I saw a couple of double, uh, what is it? Double guillotines on the side of the kids. I saw a couple of pendulum axes on their side as well. But as the EMP drones start coming out, this is going to be where these traps are going to be completely useless in the next couple of moments. And this is where you have to knock them down as well. One of the claymores is going to get popped. But look at how much traps are coming down from the kids right now. It seems like that's it for the oh. South, South American oh. team right now. Seven strike. He's going to get taken down here. An incredible amount of damage coming down from Martin. That Yuki's not going to be doing any damage. And oh it my seems like God, this is Martin. It for the South yeah. American squad. Look at at the amount of damage that seven strike took and you don't have mobility as a nat the par martina does and he sets up perfectly for himself the center of the broadcast landing on towards the nat upon gg no re calls out nautigas and this is what we wanted to see from them starting from game number one they're able to finish it in game two yeah exactly great job almost the same end to get everything martin not getting the best ultimate there but of course seven strike and christine are clearly oh. dead that's Gold joining them in the grave. Nargas takes game two with that Martina on deck, Shuvi. Yeah, who cares if that second ultimate didn't do what they wanted to do? You know what? They got that crucial ultimate off on the crucial target that they yep. desperately needed to go for. And you know what? A successful game for Team Nargas. A beautiful final ending there for those guys even without that many traps too they fought into a ton of traps but they didn't care they had the yep. damage and martin just going in very very brave as well very very confident and managing to land all of his skills directly on towards seven strike knocking down the priority target of team yeah. argos and goodbye to the damage right after that one a little bit opposite there that that was the priority target of the kids remember <laughs> you were well, <laughs> yeah i guess yeah there you go <laughs> oh well true or well no i guess i it's it's english you know it's it, it's both the same thing we're trying to say the same thing but of <laughs> course you know it, it doesn't matter at the end of the day but of course man that was a great play from martin there like you said just taking down seven strike like it was nothing too you know what oh, i mean yeah. it was what like half a second before i just i saw him on the ground unfortunately there's seven strike oh man but wow, Christian also getting taken down like that on the Hyunu is just, man, that was unprecedented. I feel like, you know, we knew how much damage the Martina did, but it was a little, little bit more crazy. I guess the uh, level 16 buff, you know, really did come through for them in that game as well. But man, Martina, Barbara, what an interesting region we have. You know what I mean? We don't get to see a lot of these characters that often. Uh, I want to say also Mementos with the Barbara, you know, Atreja going crazy. The Kathy and Barbara just by themselves doing so much damage. Our SA teams looking great today, Shuvi. Yeah, and I will say a very big change in the recent times, definitely making a bit of a difference here, right? I think the biggest change here for the kids, especially, is the fact that the tree doesn't go into the totem anymore. And Mithril is very limited in Lumia Island. I think that's one of the things that a lot of people kind of didn't anticipate when a lot of these crucial items are now starting to become built out of a Mithril. Yeah. There's not that many on the map. The only way you can actually get it actively is going to be through the alpha. And then after that, it's transfer consoles are just straight up RNG out of boxes or bears at that point too. So the ways to get totem is not that accessible for these guys. And imagine if Seven Strike actually had totem there and they managed to completely yeah. block out a single rotation of the Martina. You don't have broadcast form. Well, you do have broadcast form. You don't have broadcast ultimate skill. And even, you know, despite us talking about how broadcast has very low cooldown, if you have totem, then you're still fighting <clears> until you get that cooldown back. So Again, to not having Totem, especially on the side of Christian, definitely hurting a lot there. And that we can already see being impacted here in the South American Lumia season finals. <laughs> Oh, man, Shuvi. And speaking of impacts, let's actually talk about the scoreboard after this game because they are ready. And as we can see, Nargas actually taking first place here, oh. coming up with 96 points, 12 total kills right now for them. Second place will be No Flame with 77 points. Mbatukando coming in third right now with 55. Momentos in fourth with 52. The Kids in fifth with 50. And Oozing Eros right now in sixth. 
sixth place with 44 points. Nargos, man. Let's see if they're going to be able to keep that lead or if No Flame will get the flame back because after that game, that was a little bit unfortunate that we saw them go down that early up in Temple. But, man, it looks like those tree fights aren't going to be as easy as they thought they were before, huh, Shuvi? Yeah, guys, this is going to be a moment that all of us are going to kind of commemorate at this point for the South yeah. American players. It's not every day that you get to see Team No Flame or even just Cir uh, not Circadian, <laughs> Superior Hi. and Frankie. There you go. Hello, that is you. Um, it, it's not every day that you get to see Circadian. Oh my goodness, I did it again. Superior. There we go. I keep <laughs> seeing your name right there, and I and I'm Hi. thinking your name instead. Yes, okay. I'll Superior go with Superior and Frankie. There we go. Those are the two names that I wanted to talk about. It's not every day that you get you get to see those two fall down at the very bottom of the leaderboard and especially on top of a not being added to that team but that was just like a perfect sandwich in a corner that is one of the reasons yeah. why temple tree is like one of the worst ones to take especially if you're in that situation because you saw frankie just kind of like struggling to get out of that corner especially with that level run shift gears you don't have the leniency with the fuel at all so you just can't get out of there a not was also stuck superior just surrounded by everybody can't don quixote out of any of those angles either so a golf clap a golf clap and a half i would say for the south american teams they just blew it out of the park i am wondering uh you know maybe season nine we get some uh tree of life switch ups you know what i mean maybe we get uh, a <laughs> okay and any and any locations you know you're wanting to see maybe you know for a season oh wait but hold on we have oh. a laura Oh, Junie bringing out Laura instead of the Jenny this time there for Team Momentos. And actually, Mbatu Kondo, hold on a second. Are we going to have almost a complete comp change? It is going to be Sunshine and Anjit's going to be switching from Leon and the Fiora over to Adela Yuki. Chiron going to be staying on that Nadine, but okay, a few little switch ups here. I like it so far. Yeah, this is a bit more of the pick style composition, I think, from Mbatu Kondo, because as soon as the Yuki lands a stun on somebody, the Adela just kind of follows up, and then Chiron just does damage, right? This is a lot more of a straightforward composition than I think what the other team comp wanted to do, where the Fiora was kind of running around doing her own thing, and the Leon just kind of sitting around, the Nadine trying to give her shields and stuff like that. This is a lot more straightforward in what they want to do, and I feel like especially in this game right now, in this series that we are seeing at the moment, Moment, pick compositions are working really really well because there's that one person doing their own stuff as long as you're able to kind of peel for the t for the person that that frontliner is just doing their own stuff against and making sure that they're the ones that get it picked out afterwards it's a pretty easy fight so i really like this team composition change up here from mbatu kondo it's actually double frailty by the way for chiron as well as sunshine too so this is going to be a lot more focused around picking somebody off and making sure that they have another source of frailty to continue continuously try to jump onto other players remaining on that team yeah oh man i'm i'm looking forward to this though the adela like i don't know i you know it, it's funny i was talking about this last night uh when i was uh, <laughs> uh casting myself um it, it's kind of funny the bat adela change is well you know how do you feel about bat adela now it's got you know let me i mean that, that's the question i want to ask you here how do you how do you feel about bat adela i know we're not getting it right now but like you know it's gotten better right the amplification yeah. scaling has only gotten buffed in recent times and they buffed it again in 0 0.80 and it makes sense right like you really don't see anybody running bat adela unless it's just for stylistic purposes or that one time g were granted an erm but we don't really talk about that one <laughs> except for that one really clean combo that you did like that's ideal adela but how, and how often are you really going to get that kind of gameplay from adela it's really not that often so the fact that the amplification scaling is kind of catching up to the rapier is really nice because you do have a lot of utility on the side of bat and a lot of really nice kind of weapons that you can run, especially, you know, having access to the, uh, what is it? Oh, man, I keep forgetting the name of that specific one. What's the one that they usually run? It's the one that uh, Tia with, used to um, run all the time. Wait, uh, the, the, wait, the, what, Spy Umbrella in the, what, are you talking about the, um, oh, Pakula Chong. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So that weapon, I think it's Spy Umbrella too, right? Because we see multiple versions oh. of it where Spy Umbrella is also one where they do end up running. Oh, that's a really nice uh, dash away there from Martin. But oh, just hit level oh. six. Oh, get the stacks here. Get the stacks here. Get the stacks here. Oh, he got the stacks. He got the stacks. So it doesn't even oh. matter if you die yeah. at this point because the the death duration is less than the uh, cooldown of the recording. So he actually wins. Martin taking a one-up on that one. 
I think the defense mastery probably leveled him up. <laughs> but he can't be beat up by three people. But um, uh, going off your point about Pakua Chong, we also saw it in game one. We do see a treasure yep. with the Pakua Chong, but Shuvi, don't forget about Pakua Chong's upgrade now, Ghost Hand, which yes. does have the hex on it as well. I got, you know, it took me a second there in game number one. I saw the Ghost Hand and yep. I was like. What is that? I was like, oh, <laughs> ghost hand. Yeah, I completely forgot about it. I remember seeing it in the roadmap, and I was like, oh, is that Leon too? Like, is that is that Leon's weapon? <laughs> but no, <laughs> is it true. is going to be one of our upgraded bats here. But the thing is, you know, as good as bat is for Adela, where it's getting better, uh, I have Argos exist now on Rapier. So, uh, you know, oh, wait, Superior possibly looking for something here. It looks like this time they're actually going to be going for the Cemetery Tree of Life. I think a... Uh, I think they realize what happened up in Temple and they don't want to come to that. <laughs> yeah, they don't want it at all, but this time around they were late to the Tree of Life, so they're actually going to miss out on that objective this time around. Martin gets yet another stack here. The kill will actually go over towards No Flame. Superior was the one to pick that up, but the Tree of Life going over on towards Mementos. This is a very big time loss here, I think, for No Flame, who needs to continuously try to snowball, but they're just not getting the opportunity to do so. Their entire team is just completely split apart here. Juni, not really going to be able to lay in that Twilight but that's completely fine because Superior will fall here regardless. If he pushed away into a corner, he's going to be stuck there for a while. A lot of time being lost for the members of No Flame at the moment. Yeah, unfortunate there, man. Like you said, that tempo can really get India. You know, if oh, man, I believe. Oh wait, more stacks for Martin. You know, <laughs> we love. Uh, man, I love watching Martin stack. Oh no, goodbye, my friend. Unfortunately, you will be going back. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that kill is going to be going <laughs> over. Oh, wait, hold on. Never mind. The fight's not done. Seven Strike gets taken down. The Barbara Bomb coming down the RQ. That's, I love that name. I forget where I heard Barbara Bomb, but that is my favorite name for the RQ there on Barbara coming down. Oh, man, it's Barbara's own dump. You know what I mean? It's like uh, she gets her own PR ultimate. Yeah, her own tactical nuke, as uh, yeah. some people like call it. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, but another fight being picked here by Mementos onto the kids. Unfortunately, Ghoul oh, might be going out against Ghoul back God. in by Juni, channeling their energy work. And that is going to be a Ghoul down for this battle zone as well. Very unfortunately, Martin now <laughs> waiting in the wings, looking to see if they can get some more stacks here in this battle zone they'll be able to get two i believe they're going to be sitting at eight most likely after this but not much more going to come out of it we'll take a look at how this works though right satellite radar is a pretty nice utility here there we go martin actually did end up stacking pretty early they do have eight and at this point it's just can martin stay alive right you can see juni trying to knock down the martina as soon as possible because they don't want this martina getting jumped on at all but they're not gonna be able to pick up the kill and now it's gonna be link all of a sudden in a little bit of trouble that's a beautiful suture but that's not what this team is aiming for they're just buying more time for martin to get the health back kai's is gonna get taken down in just a moment leon also got taken down here as well but the question is, can they knock down Martin at all? How much duration until the cooldown? It is back up. There we go. A couple of stacks uh -oh. being stacked up. Oh, they were no. it was going to be eight that the Martina is going to be stuck with here. So a pretty good uh, battle zone here. And I will say taken from Team Mementos. They did everything correctly, giving only two set of stacks away over onto the Martina and then not letting the other set go through as well. So a beautiful fight taken there from Mementos and two objectives picked up back to back for that team. Yeah, not bad at all. Very happy to see it. They have been going crazy. And speaking of going crazy, especially with them, the Laura Shuvi. That is what I'm really interested in. Martin, no. Oh, wait, he got more stacks. It's okay. Don't worry. <laughs> but, oh, wow. Yeah, 10 stacks already. One more life, I believe. And then that will be Nargas coming online. And now this is going to be a fun one. I'm curious to see if they are going to be able to keep their first place spot. But hold on. Chiron, great explosive shot there from the crossbow. Trying to kite back away now superior just diving on top of them so much damage a not there as well anji having to get out of here locked up by superior and that is gonna be it for anji there as well as sunshine chiron living to see another day of course about 25 seconds to the rest of mbato gundo is back up oh we did not see that but uh you know <laughs> I, I, I love when stuff like that happens. It's my favorite because, you know, 
it can happen to any of us, Juvie. It's I've I've seen it happen in every single region. Oh, Martin, wait, did Martin get? Oh, Martin did get broadcast yep. actually. Yep. That's a big W over on the side of Martin. I think they managed to get taken down again before that happened, but the end result is that they did hit the broadcast form a bit later than they did in game number two. But of course, they, you know, hitting it in day number two to begin with is a really good pace, I will say, especially in this patch. So good stuff coming out there for Martin. Again, still on that level one for the broadcast ultimate. It's not going to matter in the long run because they will start leveling in just a moment here. And you can yep. tell how well Kai's and Leon is just kind of adapting to what they have to do with the Martina because they're keeping themselves alive too. They're not losing any time by falling down but for no reason. I think he might be sticking good together and they're completely fine. Anjits stuck in the middle of nowhere. They will get found out and that's a good buy over onto the Yuki. Trying to run away here. Sunshine with a really good peel set up there. But Anjits, you're not running away from a Sua as well as a Sylvia. That's just straight up not happening. Will get taken down. I don't know who the Tree of Life went to. It might have been Mementos again. So, oh my my goodness, no flame just completely getting denied every single objective here, and they don't have a single one, I feel like. Oh, they do have the mithril. Yeah, chasing Anjits like that definitely was a little bit of a rough play there for them, just because now, of course, like you said, it denied access to the Tree of Life. We also see Martin getting stronger and stronger. Martin, Martina, we love it. Vic G online, as well as our lovely, the good, the good old Chong Pao upgrade, Shuvi. You love to see it. All of these new items coming into the game. You know what I mean? You know, we haven't seen a, uh, we haven't seen a cowboy hat yet, but I'm praying maybe we get one cowboy hat in the tournament. I, I think we did, right? In game number one, I think it was, it was, it was Chiron running it. He had the Star of the Wild. Oh, man. did he? Actually, I didn't even see it. My apologies then. That was super fun. I'm really glad that it's already being utilized, right? Because there's a lot of times where new items are added into the game and they just can't find themselves within the meta for a while because, you know, like build routes aren't going to be optimized for it yet. We don't exactly know if the stats are going to hold up to whatever exists in the game already to begin with. But it seems like uh, Cowboy, again, like it, it feels that really small niche that hasn't really been filled in Eternal Return for a very, very long time. Yeah. Because we've always had tactical ops helmet, but that's literally it for attack speed, especially on the helmet that actually gives you beneficial stats. Mithril helm has always been really good to transition into after tactical ops, but it still doesn't give you the offensive stats that you're really looking for. And I've seen a lot of cases where you run that and you just don't have attack power, but you just have a lot of cooldown and defense, which is not exactly what you're looking for sometimes. So I do like the fact that the cowboy helmet ex ex exists now. And We'll see a bit more of that hopefully in the next coming games, but for now we have to talk about this one as day three battle zones have popped. No Flame sitting right here alongside Team Nardigas and Aina taking a, a little bit of damage. The shield is pretty big right now, but again, the Martina's already in broadcast form. This is not exactly where you want to be fighting this team at the moment. Aina, a great push up against Martina to try to knock them away, but that's a beautiful stun coming down from Martina wow. as well. Oh, this is not good though. There's a lot of teams hanging around this area right now and No Flame all of a sudden not exactly in the prime position to fight this at all. Frankie has to run away here. They're sitting at about half HP. This only helps Team Nardigas as Frankie trying to do whatever he can, but he's going to get taken down here. Lily Petal will actually pop that Wolf Assault, so they're not going to have it in the next couple of fights. He's not trying to keep himself alive. Superior doing the exact same thing, but he's not going to be able to stand up against three people all at once. Anon's timer is going through, and there we go. Pop goes the weasel for him. Now it just comes down to Nargus versus Team Losing Ego sitting inside of this battle zone. But again, Wolf Assault is gone. We have the memory come back up for Uzuma, but that is Sua, so it doesn't really matter. Niku Niku Sushi should be able to build at that gauge, so that doesn't matter as well, but without the Wolf Assault, the damage on the Nadine, especially when you're running Amp, very much severely falls off. Yeah, let's see if they're going to be able to fight it at all. I'm excited. Nargas, oh my god! Kay's taking so much damage there to start off this fight. Martin also sitting at half. This is going to be a little oh. hard. Oh my god, Bullseye hit, Juvie. I don't know if Martin's going to be able to do much. They actually are losing their timer. Wait a second. I think, wait, hold on. Wait, oh, wait, wait Martin's hit. <laughs> no, yeah, unfortunate there. Lily Petal going to clean it on up. That's Uzi e girls taking the hotel battle zone for them. I think... Nargus actually had that if Martin was up, especially after yeah. I think it was Uzma fell, but it's not going to be happening here. This is oh. a huge figure, though. That's a massive amount of oh. damage. Right? 
two as well. Anok gets taken down. Superior trying his best to stay alive, but this is the mistake that a lot of other teams were making. They're not going to do it this time around. Completely split apart is going to be Superior and Frankie, and they're trying to chase Don't down chase Superior well. yeah. here. But yeah, okay, okay, there you go. Don't make the mistake that a lot of other teams were at least finish them off. Stop this team from their tracks. Stop them from getting any more kills, and that is exactly what they do. Frankie just completely split apart from Superior, who has to eat more timer at this point as well to try to get themselves healed back up. But that's a big blockade now set inside for Team No Flame. Yeah, that is just crazy. Oh my goodness. A not going down like that is definitely not what you want to be seeing. Oh my god, and there's that yeah, there's that cow good old cowboy head as well. Whoa, wow. Star of the Wild, whatever you want to call it. Star of the West. Star of the Wild or Star of the West? Oh, wait, hold on. Yeah, what is going on over here? Unfortunately, Junie and Link went down from Mementos. That's not what you want to be seeing either. Also, it is night three, so I must mention we do have Wickline sitting right there in Cemetery, walking through all those headstones. Oh, man, who's going to actually take it this time? Oh, boy, here we go. A Treja, unfortunately. Oh, gets hit by the F stop, and I believe this is going to be it for them. They are going to try and get away, but oh, with, oh no, I thought they actually juked them there for a second, but yeah, one little punch and that will be it. Mementos, our first full team down. Oh Sunshine. my god, Sunshine got taken out here too. What the heck happened to their health bar? Their teammates are absolutely nowhere to be seen. Yeah, wow, I do wonder what happened. Yeah, you're right, but yeah, it looks like Uzi Negro was able to get a kill onto them, and now... Uh oh, let's see. Frankie and Superior are gonna get found oh, down. Oh. Lily pedal. Oh my goodness, the damage. Superior almost down. Only a few seconds left on his health bar. And let's see. I believe that's gonna be the end for Superior. Nico has the bike. She's gonna be chasing. Here we go. Superior, unfortunately, gonna fall. That's no flame. Our second team falling like it's nothing. Oh my god, man. And even a temporal refraction on Niku Nikosushi, so Superior can't stop her either. Oh, beautiful combination of things going right there for Team Uzi Negros. And they're starting to stack up these kills. They're sitting on 9 right now for themselves. So very, very well set is this team going in towards the latter stages of the game. But the Wickelian objective still up and online. And this is absolutely zero contestion coming out from the rest of our teams here. We have three full teams remaining going into our Day 4 phase. Of course, that's going to be Nautigas, Uzi girls as well as the kids so again it's you know the south american team of nargas going up against the north americans and this is going to be quite another story here that nargas is going to be able to set if they do end up taking this one and they're pretty well set to do so right now especially with martina sitting on that broadcasting for form ever since day number two nope. absolutely amazing that was a bush check of course of course <laughs> they could be in any bush don't worry about it but Four and a half minutes, seven strike, and the rest of the kids have that. I believe it's just about 19 minutes. The wick buff will be going away. So let's see what they are going to be able to do with it. Oh, thank God. Not another school final zone. Although Forest is on the map, of course, and taking a look. Look at a lot of these upgrades. Oh, my goodness. Christian looking fat as well as seven strike. Poor Ghoul, though. He's kind of a... Uh... He's been kind of left in the dust when it comes to uh, upgrades. <laughs> Poor ghoul. But of course, still, Christian and Seven Strike just doing so much damage. Yeah, but this is the thing I like to see about that team. And this uh -oh. is one of the reasons why I think Goal is like one of the best kind of um, squads player that you can kind of fit into almost right. any oh. single team. Because they've just been able to kind of adjust into literally any single kind of team composition and the team play style that they've ever gone into. He's played like the carry role. He's played the tank role. He's played the support role. He's played the backline role, frontline role. Like you name it, this guy can play it. And he really doesn't mind at all that he's just kind of getting left behind with all the these items because he knows that he's kind of not exactly the the the, the main focus of that team comp right you're just there especially running two-handed sword just scaling into the late game just providing as much damage as possible and the crowd control especially with the tuan tian so goal is completely fine with this as long as his teammates can do the damage and do whatever they do best goal is fine here just chilling with all those items too so i really like that about goal yeah goal going crazy on it and now they're going to be sitting oh. in the bush Losing E-Girls right above them there. It's going to be moving around right now. Oh, this is going to be a close fight, I feel like. Two of our NA teams. Oh, they have an idea. Oh, go. Oh, my God. Speak of the devil. Gets taken down to half health. Finish line up there as well, just to be able to check the bush. And let's see. It is a Mithril Shield coming out there. They're going to be able to grab 
Unfortunately, I don't believe much going to be done with it except be used for the good old credits. But now I'm curious to see actually what's in this box as well. What are we getting, my friends? It is a gun buy. A little sanguine gun buy up and ready for them. Not too bad. Oh, man, Shuvi. This is getting tense. You know what I mean? They have a yep. little over a minute left on the wick buff. This is going to be really, really close. I'm like... Oh, and it is a forest final zone as well, so the game loves me, of course. Oh, and, uh, <gasps> they don't oh my god. Oh, wait, my they don't god. see it. What? <laughs> that copy? It's oh, because my the god. Oh, my god. That's they so didn't funny. see them. Oh, my god. He literally just was right there. And he didn't see Mbautu Kondo just <laughs> sitting there. Oh, my god. <laughs> They're still alive, man. That is what matters. And it is Chiron as well as Anjus. Like, these two still have a lot of kill potential on their own, too, by the way. Remember, it's in the yeah. Dean, especially with Frailty. Would have liked Adrenaline at this stage in the game, but it doesn't matter, of course. That's a good uh, Tomfa skill to deny the damage from Lily Petal. I do wonder if uh, Kaiser's weapon level 14, indeed they are, but oh. still, these bullseyes are raining down from absolutely nowhere. These guys are completely out of vision right now, and this is going to be another huge hit. Martin is going to take the damage here too. Chiron. Chiron sitting inside the bush and they're going to be found out most likely. Anjic joined the fray here too but again Team Nargos no timer on their side. That's a huge ultimate coming down from the Yuki. Oh this is not looking good. Anjic actually manages to knock down Kai's and look at the health bars on the side no. of Nargos, Uzma and everybody else on the side of Uzi Eagles joined the fray here too and that's going to be goodbye over on the side of Team Nargos. Oh my god. Anjic trying to do whatever he can to keep his teammate alive but it's going to be done and dusted for him. Oh, what a brutal end there for Team Narigas, and it is going to be North America versus North America to round out our game number three between the kids and oozing girls. Yeah, and let's see. I believe, yeah, the Wick buff is going to be gone there for the kids. Anjit's trying to find anywhere to go and hide right now. This is a bit rough. Oh, oh no! Oh. Oh. DP's right on top of losing E girls, unfortunately. <laughs> and that will be the end for Mbappu Kondo. And now let's see how this fight is going to go. They probably just want to go up there and take it already, maybe. Or they are just going to be setting up here in this final zone. Either way, you know. Let's see, the kids are going to have to walk right into them. This is going to be really hard. Oh, the bullseye oh seven strike down to half health. That is disgusting, Shuvi. The damage from Lily Petal. American oh. Sniper, man, I swear. Lily Petal is just way too good with this. And as they slowly but surely push everyone from the kids out, like, this is what happens, right? You got to keep healing yourself back up. But there's not that much time left at the moment. There's plenty of red time to go around for the kids. But this is just consistently what's going to be happening to your health bar at this point. Seven Strike trying his best to rest up as well. But Reign of Arrows coming through. And you can see exactly where everybody else is right now. Uzma knows exactly his position here, too. Just going to be consistently denying these rest ups. And look at... At each of these bullseyes. I mean, what do you do? Oh like, my his god. Right now, you can do nothing but just go straight in. I mean, you can see everyone trying their best right now, too. Seven Strike is going to miss a ton of crucial skills. He's going to get taken down oh, yet no. again. And this is going to be Goal getting taken down here, too. And at this point, Christian just sitting in the middle of nowhere all by himself will have absolutely no say in that final zone. And it is going to be the Uzi Girls taking away game number three before we go into our intermission. A beautiful Ooh. game. 15 total team kills. A huge game for this team. That was insane coming out for them such great plays throughout game number three looks like north america is kind of waking up now shuvi i think that might be them overtaking team nargas but i'm not too sure yet of course scoreboard will be available after we take our break but just talking a little bit more about it before we do that was insanity especially at the end i th thought Team Nargas was going to be able to do a little bit more there, but unfortunately, Oozing E-Girls just knocking them down with both the Bullseye and that Reign of Arrows just is not what you wanted to see at all. 
Yeah, and in the end, I feel like one of the biggest problems here for Team Nargas, despite playing super well and despite Martin actually getting those stacks up really, really early, they have to spend a lot of time losing their red timer, which is one of the biggest resources yeah. that we've talked about throughout the course of Season 8. I don't think they've ever gone into the final zone with more than 20 or 30 seconds of timer on their own. Like, they're getting kills, but to get these kills, they're losing a ton of time to do that too. So maybe that's going to be one factor that Team Nargas has to take in effect, especially as we go into games four and five because there's not that many games left here those guys yeah. play really really well when they're playing on the offensive but when they're running away every single time they're eating timer left and right and left and right of course but guys we're gonna have to find out more about this after our break it'll be a little short quick 10 minute intermission so get up get some drinks get some snacks and for right now guys we will see you all in 10 minutes
Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Season 8 Lumia Marathon finishes here this time once again for South America. I still believe I am Circadia, joined by this guy. Still don't know his name, but I believe he's called Shuvi Senpai. They let me know before. I thought the production staff had to, had to let me know what his name was. But, of course, welcome back, guys, from our 10-minute intermission. Shuvi, what would you do? Did you have a good little break there? I think I, I, I kind of did. Yeah, I spent my entire uh, break just kind of losing my identity. Now, I'm not sure who I am either. You're, you know, this is something that happens to you and I all the time. So at this point, are we really surprised? Not at all. But guys, I know we already want to get right back into it. Let's take a look at those scores after game number three, because that was an insane game, honestly. And it shot oozing e-girls all the way up there into first place with 112 points. Nargos going to be sitting in second right now with 104. No flame in third with 95. Fourth will be the kids with 90. Mom uh, Momentos in fifth with 73. And Imbatocando in sixth right now with 71 points. And oh my God, I know all these players are ready to fight. Two games left here. Games four and five, of course. And then Shuvi or Lumia Marathon will be finished. I'm going to be sad about it. We're not going to be seeing any more of the Western regions, of course. But we still have a little bit of ERM to go if you guys need more Eternal Return action. That'll be next weekend. But there's still so much to talk about with SA here today. Are you expecting... Uh, Sorry, let me start out with, are you expecting any composition changes here in game number four? We did get to see the Laura come out uh, there from Juni. Um, I believe we also got to see, it was Anjit's and Sunshine change yep. over to the Yuki and Adela. Are you expecting maybe anything else to come out of game four? Maybe they go back to stuff. I don't know. What are you thinking? Let's actually, you know, we're getting already into it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't really expect any changes. Oh, wait. At least, like, major ones Touch. to come out. Because we're already seeing uh, one. Actually, it might be major. Never mind. Whoa. I'm going to slowly but surely backtrack exactly what yeah. I said just now. Because uh, we are just completely seeing completely two okay. different things coming out from the two teams of South America right now. Momentos and Mbatukando just completely swapping around what they want to be running here. And it seems like a wow. very interesting way that they want to set up what they do here in game number four because for mementos they're going for the big big aoe zone control right you have juni sitting on the bianca reign of the vampire queen an absolutely massive skill if you combine it especially with the um with the ultimate coming down from the carla as well that is a massive amount of crowd control that a lot of teams especially with the grounding effect on the bianca are gonna have trouble with so We'll see what ends up happening here, especially for that team. The biggest issue here is just simply the fact that they are going to be very much locked behind whether or not Juni actually has ultimate. That's the kind of the issue of bringing Bianca, especially nowadays. But there's been yeah. a ton of buffs to her damage overall. So maybe it's not going to be that big of an issue. But then on the other side of the coin, exactly below them, I mean, Team Mbatu Kondo, look at exactly what they're bringing. Yeah, I am so excited, actually, for Mbatu Kondo. That's going to be fun the jenny man i've been a really big fan of jenny while now i i think she's great on a great spot right now especially is that kind of like mid to backline eight uh adc i guess you could say backline or whatever you want to call it hyper carry you know uh, what any form variation of the word you want to call it but man i'm just excited for mementos right now i love all three of those characters so much and i'm so excited to see how they're going to kind of work together you know i believe if you were on a certain doodle stream last night you might have seen the uh, good old conveyor belt you know with the eyes that's going on <laughs> <laughs> so that is uh what i was thinking about there but i am curious to see Isaac as a frontliner, uh, with the Sentinel as well, going to be shielding his team a lot, able to get so just so much shielding out of how low those cooldowns are, especially on the Q and the W mainly more than anything. Uh, but yeah, coming into this, like you said, they are going to be a little bit gated by the Bianca. You know, the ultimate, that Reign of the Vampire Queen being kind of your main setup around their engage tool. You could maybe get something off with the Isaac, even if you don't have the ultimate, but it's a little bit harder. Let's see, though, what they're going to be able to do with it. Yeah, and uh, in the end, I think the bigger issue here, more so than Bianca, you just mentioned how the Isaac sitting in the front line, especially with Sentinel, is actually going to be something that's going to be interesting for you to look at. For me, I actually think it's a bit more problematic because looking at their team composition here, the Isaac's the only one that's actually sitting up in the front lines, right? Yeah. And that means that the Isaac is going to be taking a lot more punishment than you usually normally see Isaac's taking because a lot of compositions that do end up running Isaac, I 
feel like also runs another melee character and then a backline DPS character. But because you don't have that additional frontliner to also soak up some damage, you're going to have to be extra tanky as the Isaac. And despite Sentinel being really consistent in the amount of shield that it gives you, it's not Diamond Shard, right? Yeah. So I'm a little bit worried here for Link, if I'm going to be honest with you. It all really comes down to whether or not the quick spin I feel like is going to be timed correctly, and whether or not Juni and Atreja can actually take advantage of the Isaac trying to buy time for their backlines to actually get the jump on. I, I'm scared, but it is mementos. We've seen this team do massive things throughout the course of our series here tonight. And if they're able to pull this team composition off, this is one of those very, very rewarding comps to see actually pull through as long as they get everything that goes in their favor. Oh, man, talking about stuff going in their favor. Martin back at it again on the Martina, which I am looking forward to. We do have 20 seconds till the Tree of Life is up. He's already sitting in Cemetery, ready to go to get some of these stacks. We do have seven strikes for Christine here, actually. Let's see who if stacks are ready. <laughs> oh, wow. Wait, where did he even get? Okay, Martin coming out with it. I like to see it. Let's see. He's going to be able to get that speed gate. He's going to try and run away a little bit. People are going to be going for the tree. It looks like his team is here to back him up, of course. Lovely. You'd love to see it. There we go. Two more stacks for him. And I hope he doesn't actually burn red timer. I honestly think dying here is better than burning red timer at this point. You know what I mean? You have infinite read eyes. You don't have infinite red timer. But oh my goodness, a fight already in Batu Kondo. Chiron about to go down. Hold on. This is a crazy one, Shuvi. What's going on already? It's not looking bad at all. Sentinel was procked over onto the Carla, so they actually managed to get themselves away with the shield, but that means Link is going to get taken down here. Atreja are trying to do whatever they can because the meteorite is still up, but they're going to get taken down now themselves. Our two South American teams that actually denied Team No Flame now getting completely torn to shatters because they are the ones that fought each other instead of Team No Flame. The Tree of Life most likely who was already picked up by this team towards oh, the north side of the map. Yeah, but Frankie just completely going into the middle of nowhere as Aina was absolutely nowhere to be seen. So incredible things happening over here, over near the meteorite in Pond. But again, more objectives going towards Team No Flame. That means two uh, objectives picked up for that team, the Tree of Life and the meteorite over in night number one. Pretty huge for a team that's been falling behind very substantially in the early stages for the past couple of games. Yeah, Frankie going a little bit too deep there. Like you said, Aenot, nowhere to really be found. We also have our battle zones, as we can see. Temple and Uptown ready to go. And I am wondering how it's going to go here for a lot of these teams. More stacks for Martin. Here we go, buddy. Come on. Right now. He's going to be able to do it. Let's see. This is, if he wants to die, it's going to have to be now if he wants to be up yep. for either of these battle zones. So hopefully Good. he accepts his death. 25 uh... seconds with just a few seconds left. It's going to be close, Shuvi. It's going to oh. be really close. Don't you need five seconds to go into a battle zone? I don't know if that works with revives, but if that's the case, I don't think Martin's going to make it. That sucks. <laughs> Let's find out maybe, maybe, happens. maybe alpha. <laughs> oh, hold on. Yeah, could be an alpha angle as well. On oh. gonna take it down to half. Oh my god, ults everywhere. What is this fight? Holy Chiron goes down. They obviously don't want this, but the problem is they're gonna instantly win the battle zone, which means they can just run out of it and chase the other guys, but doesn't look like that's gonna be never mind. It is gonna be the case, actually. And now going down to uptown Christian about to go down as well. But actually he's gonna slam Atreja into the wall. Juni looking for a lot of damage there. There comes the anchor from Atreja. He just a it. great crossbow skill there. Cool, even with the parry. My god, Mementos. What a great battle. Battle zone victory. Oh my god, Link is looking beautiful while he does that as well. Just, I think that's a bug, right? Like, that has to be a bug. <laughs> it's just completely uh, shining in armor at this point for Link. So, a great battle zone pickup, as you just mentioned there. I think it was a meteorite pickup from Momentos as well. So, even more power going over onto our amplification characters. And this could go many, many different ways right now for Atreja. Looking how they're picking up the rock, though, it is going to be the Golden Ghost that they, it is going to be prioritized for the Carla here. A really, really big source of damage that that team is going to be able to receive and if you're able to see fights especially on that team like the one that we just saw i mean that is so so big for those guys that's exactly what we're looking for right not the kind of like the little straggled fight that we saw over in avenue and pond the fight down in uptown is exactly what we want to see although for Aenot, this is a bit problematic i think the flash actually pushed Aenot 
away from the coup de gras and now it's going to be Anjit in a bit of trouble as Sunshine now getting jumped on on themselves as well you got to try to help out your teammates as much as possible but they're focusing only on towards Anon can they knock the Fioras down yes they can the two Fioras have been knocked down now Frankie Doodle trying to chase this down as much as possible Anon's going to get picked up here first but we've seen what happens when Frankie gets a little bit too far from his teammates he will stay safe instead oh no this is unfortunate there for Martin I believe <laughs> Oh. Martin's gonna have to run away. No arm piece to be found for Martin just yet, but that's completely okay. Doesn't even really need it. You don't even need to do your build until uh, until you're completely done with the stacks. You know what I mean? As long as if you got shoes and a weapon, that's all you really need on Martina until you actually get your broadcast mode enabled. But it is day two, 30 seconds left in it, of course. And I am wondering who is going to be around for night two. Oh my god, what is that? Link is still fine, man. Link is still shining in his armor. <laughs> can I? Can we get? Can we get a little bit of a zoom in on the? You know, from our little production. Can we, oh, oh my god, god dude, what that is looks that? so cool, though. I don't know how to describe it. Is that the new Isaac skin? Like, <laughs> exactly. It, when they said chroma, they meant chrome. You know. <laughs> I know, a lot of, uh, I know a lot of games tend to do this thing where uh, kind of like a rank reward, they just kind of oh, like yeah. the, the, I think Smite does it if I remember correctly, where they just like completely brighten up a character with mastery or something like that. Dude, they yeah. should give that to Eternal Return. That looks cool. Oh, now hold on. Here we go with a fight. We actually have oozing E-Girls in Flame about to get added. Frankie Doodle on the bike. They're actually going to decide to back off for right now. Not wanting to go too deep, of course. They just want to get the meteorite for right now. Uzma trying to deny it from Superior. Does stop it there for a second. Frankie, oh, gets poked down by Lily Petal. She is forced to go over the wall, though. Uzma trying to stop it again. Superior did actually end up getting it, which is not too bad at all. But it looks like Uzma wants a little bit more here. Hold on. Aenot trying to get out as well. All the finish lines. This stuns. What is happening? Uh oh. We're looking for something. Uh oh. This is going to be rough. Uzma needs to get out now. Nico as well. They're all falling low, Shuvi. There's the totem as well. And we can see the original Dua and. Oh, Sylvia, my apologies there. I had to clear my throat, but they are getting it done here. Meanwhile, Nico Nico Sushi actually not in that good of an environment over in school. <laughs> Atresia now as well. They're actually going to find no flame. Superior gets arrested sitting at half health. Now, Rain of the Vampire Queen coming out. Let's see if they're going to be able to do it. The shiny man himself coming on in trying to fight here. But guess what? Bakukondo's here as well. Link going to get pulled oh. in. There's a big anchor from Atreja. We're not going to land. That's a lot of damage, though. Oh, my goodness. Juni now has to get out. Shuvi fights on fights on fights. Oh, I think that's the first time I've ever seen a three-man Carlo to actually hit the second phase. Nothing sucks at that point. Yes, but same. You know what? That was really <laughs> cool from what I saw. Juni trying to run here. You can kind of die now if you want to take advantage of, uh, you know, dying to this. Okay, cool. They will revive here, but they're going to lose a ton of timer. I don't think that was worth it at all for Juni. They're going to get taken down, though, right? So not, a, not that much timer lost on the side <laughs> of the Bianca here. But this still sucks, I think, for the team composition over here. Totem still picked up because because they did manage to take down a couple of the other players sitting around here. So that maybe means that Link's a little visual bug here is going to get, uh, going to disappear soon, because as soon as the totem comes through, I think that's gone for that. Yeah. Oh my god, that hit a lot to a Treja, though. Treja needs to run here. Ten seconds until the Bianca comes back. Super Saiyan Isaac, Shuvi. My goodness, his power level. Super <laughs> Saiyan God. Have we ever seen something so powerful from Isaac? He's finally unlocked his, his full potential. That is oh, so funny, man. man. You love. I honestly, I love it. Keep it. You know what I mean? Let's. We need it. We need a. We need like a Dragon Ball collab with uh, Eternal Return X Dragon Ball. You know who would you even have? I. I need Yuki as Trunks or something. You know what I mean with the sword? <laughs> That'd be sick. Where did Atreza get all that? What? <laughs> I don't even know. I feel like two minutes ago. Just having all that in their inventory. <laughs> That's the pull onto Anjits. Oh my goodness, Ooh. just gonna get bursted down like it's nothing, and it's day three. But now they're gonna be looking for Sunshine. There's an ultimate out as well. And yeah. that's two members of Ibatu Kondo going down like it was nothing. Mementos, light work for them. Oh my goodness, man. Mementos, their team composition swap up seems to be working on their end for and Batukondo. It was a little bit too split off, right? Like their team comp works, it's a good team. 
But, you know, if you're a little bit too split apart from your teammates, that's where the problems start to arise. And that's exactly what ended up happening. And we have our first two permanent deaths of our game here as Anjit and Sunshine, unfortunately, falling down. A couple of teams trying to, you know, brute force a couple of these battle zones for themselves at the moment. Nargos sitting inside of the pond area right now because this is their battle zone that they have won. They do have the leniency of walking in there. But look at the zone coverage at the moment for the kids right now, too. Hospital completely covered in vision for these guys and the only spot that they don't have vision on is the only way that i think nargos can enter and they will do that right yep. now they're trying to look for an angle to at least get out of here maybe they want to stay but i wonder if they do stay like what are they staying here for is the question all uh, right yeah it is kind of odd to sit up there i do wonder it's what's gonna happen do also see using e-girls just trying to farm up as much as possible we pedal in a lot of stacks also having the Argy, Queen of Hearts, and Iron Maidens, so you already know these bullseyes, they are going to hurt very hard. Yeah, look at how careful they're playing too, checking mm -hmm. literally every single bush. There, there's uh -oh. no way to catch them off guard, although, oh no, no! They got seen, no! no. no. Just not far enough around the corner, unfortunately. Oh, how sad is that, man? That is so fun. Oh, man. So unfortunate. Wick also spawning up here in the forest. Oh, Raja. Put a damage on the superior there, and it looks like Link actually getting a big oh. rest on the Anon. Hold on. No, the Raid of the Vampire Queen. That is not what they wanted there. Frankie's going to be healing them up. That would have been huge. Yeah. Oh, man. How sad, though, to see something like that happen. Wickeline also just going to be walking through Chapel. They need to sit there and wait for that ultimate to come back online. Oh, Man, that is so, so unfortunate. I think that was actually Anot's doing, though, right? You can see the Flacious cooldown is down, which means it was mm -hmm. most likely actually an interrupt on the circulation, which is really good from Anot, because it's exactly as you mentioned. If that actually went through, if that Reign of the Vampire Queen landed on all three of them, that was it, right? Like, they were all most likely going to either take a huge chunk of damage, be pressured down, and have, a, have to waste a lot of time trying to run away, or it was just going to be a complete... Uh, you know, uh -oh. utter annihilation uh -oh. for Team 2, as again, we might be seeing a bit of a sandwich here for Team No Flame, but they are the ones that took Wick Line. Their health bars are still looking very, very healthy. This is still a really solid position for these guys to be standing around. Link, yeah, you gotta be a bit more careful there, buddy. He will dash his way on out. And for the next couple of minutes, it seems like Team No Flame are gonna have the very, very big advantage of that Wickling Bleed. Superior still trying to chase this down. They will actually deny any more entries for Team Mementos. And they're just buying more time at this point. But the transitions on the side of Team No Flame right now, and we saw how many transition items they got throughout the course of the game, they are sitting absolutely wealthy on all of the items right now, too. Yeah, man. Wealth whispers, Shuvi. Always remember that. You know, these teams, you know, I know we've seen it before, especially over in ERM. Oh, goodness. Hold on. Here we go. Let's see a big fight over here. I'm seeing EMPs, Reign of the Vampire Queens, everything going on. And unfortunately, Mementos oh. getting taken down. Juni, the last one remaining, trying to go back in with the dash. But unfortunately, Mementos gonna fall down here as well. Uh-oh, uh though, Shuvi. We've seen this before. This is not good at all. We need Nargas to run right now. No flames on the chase. But we've seen this before. No Flame's gonna wait. They know that they have the timer advantage. They're oh, just they're gonna rude. wait. And they're gonna start going in. This is so bad. So many teams have fallen prey to this. And they know exactly what's going on. They're gonna turn oh, tail no. away from the Hyperloop. This is a really good recording. That's a lot of damage down from the Martina. But the damage is seeming to not be enough at the moment. Trying to lock down Frankie Doodle. But the Martina goes straight back. Goodbye to Leon. Oh no. We've seen way too many teams fall down to the death trap that No Flame just put down on that team. Oh my god, man. I, we've seen it time and time again, right? Like, teams just do not learn that as soon as you start... It's always an alley, too, man. It's always in the alley hyper yep. that this happens on. It is cursed up there, I tell you. I don't know what it is. And it's just so cursed up there. But the classic third-party angle always coming in strong. No flame. Great pick out there, though, going into school. That was unfortunate. Mementos getting avenged there. Only Ks left there for Nargos. The Alex 
at least not like that bad of a not character bad. to rat with. You know what I mean? It's nothing like a Johan or something, but, uh, or, well, no, Johan's actually not that bad either. I shouldn't say yeah. that. Johan, <laughs> Johan's kind of funny, you know, what you're able to do. But unfortunately, I think Ready? this might be our Alex getting picked out here. It's nice dodge out there, but I don't think it's going to be enough. The EMP coming out as well. Okay, cool. <laughs> little, uh, little silly on that one, but that's okay. Let him cook. But, let him cook. Yeah, let him cook. Who let this guy cook, of course? Oh, man. But yeah, Shuvi. Oh, my God. Is it a forest final zone again? It is indeed. This, this is this is just your night, man. There is a lot of uh, forest final zones happening. We had two. Oh, my God. Two we, schools. We had, two, yeah. yeah. Two schools back to back. Two forest final zones back to back. Unfortunately, we don't have a sixth game, so we're not going to have another zone back to back. But wow, what an evening here for uh, final zones. And this kind of, uh, I, I don't know, actually, what whose team does this benefit, right? Because as uh, we kind of talk about, especially over in the pond final zone, taking advantage of the bottom side uh, temporary zone with the bridge is actually really good for almost any teams. I think the win rate there is absolutely massive for literally any team that has control of that. But it's very similar for the teams in forest as well. If you can take advantage and take control of the bottom side temp zone, because because of how close it is to the final zone, you have a lot of leniency in regards to how well you can set up. And the only way that the team coming down from the top side temp zone is that one choke point, right? Whereas if you're walking from the bottom one, you have two. So there's a bit of leniency there. But yeah, we'll see which team manages to take control of the bottom side uh, temp zone right now. For at the moment, it does seem to be no flame. They're well situated inside of this area. And they're going to be trying to knock down and block away entries for the teams coming inside from Chapel, in which there are two at the moment. So this is a really nice positioning here that we do have Team No Flame set on. Uh, the two Sua and Sylvia teams trying to match up against each other when it comes to front mining. The Wick Bleed is still up and online, but the poke from Lily Petal is slowly but surely starting to hurt here. The two Sylvia's trying to res up their teammates as much as possible right now. You have to wonder how much healing they're doing throughout the course of this game at the moment. But you can see here, beautiful positioning coming out from everybody. Frankie's gonna get his Tellurian, uh, his Tempora Refraction popped with a poke out from this Nadine. Still looking massive right now. Team No Flame does absolutely wants no part of this at the moment will hyperloop towards the top side instead and the battle of the pope still continues here lily petal hit up with the odyssey are they gonna go for this yeah it's gonna be close they just keep healing though radar gun on radar gun radar gun i love sylvia i love sylvia i love sua it's so fun oh my goodness look at these comps fighting each other yeah exactly this is gonna be oh my god now they're gonna be chasing k's down i do wonder this is the big I, this is the big thing you have to wonder is when the kids are actually gonna decide to go down they're gonna probably be sitting in their zone but they're probably gonna give it a few seconds and if nobody from these two teams actually is gonna start fighting let's see if the kids are gonna be able to have a successful third party angle onto this we already see them walking shuvi are they gonna decide to go is the question Let's this see. could be pretty big though, the, oh, uh, the area has been contained. Yeah, Wolf Assault is popped here from Lily Petal. Sula just goes completely in. Uzma is stuck in the middle of nowhere now. Anot is towards the back line at the moment, but Lily Petal is completely safe. Look at all the traps going down. There is no entry for Anot at all. He's going to have to go into stasis here as well. But look at the health part difference between Anot all of our down. teams. Anot's actually the first one that goes down. There is absolutely no SP on Superior 2. He gets taken down and now Frankie Doodle trying to run up, but there is absolutely nowhere for him to go at this point. Oh my god. And we're seeing it again. The kid stuck in the middle of nowhere. Now they have to start walking down. But look at the timer on the side of 7 Strike. He can't afford to walk down right now. And we've seen this before. They want to go for something. But their timers. What are you guys doing? Oh, this is not good at all. Everybody's timer is low. Big F stop actually catching out two members of the... Oh, oh my God. Of Uzi e Girls. But oh, my God. Back and forth. There's the parry from Ghoul. Only four seconds left for Christian. No. What is happening? Christian actually pops. Uzma's down. What is happening? And now it's Ghoul in a... Oh, my God. What happened? What? Okay. <laughs> hey, so what? I, I don't know. Oozing e girls takes it, but just what? I, what was that? Look at your face. Look at his face. I mean, listen. You, I always say this, right? You have to pull the trigger. And we saw the situation that the kids were in. Oh. They got PTSD from Game Three, man. Like, yeah, they knew exactly what was coming for them. If it was the, if it was oozing e girls sitting on the bottom side temp zone, I, I get it.
the timer. <laughs> it's it's just a timer diff. You know what I mean? It'll happen yeah. to you, Shuvi. Oh, I get my the desperation God. play, though, right? Again, yeah. I like the fact that they pulled the trigger, and it was actually close because there was a really good F-stop coming in from 7-strike, leading directly into a two-man coup de grace. But, you know, timer is a thing. We're living in 2023. Eternal Return is a game all about timer. I mean, it was a really good attempt there, and you want to try jumping on towards oozing e-girls when they're all down on the utility, which is the reason why the fight was super close. Mm-hmm. If they had just a few more seconds of timer, man, like it was a few more seconds, <laughs> just that much should be this much can matter, yeah. especially in a game like this, man. It has been so crazy. That was such a insane battle zone. If anything, oh I respect God. it. Loot's yeah, out no. kids, right? Like, no, you I respect it completely that. too. That was just insane. Oh my god, Shuvi, what happened there? That was just like I don't even know. I I don't know, but wow, only one game left here and it is going to be a close one for sure. It's I wonder how a lot of these teams are going to respond, you know what I mean? I think it's going to be a lot closer than people think it is, especially just with what's been happening through all these games. It's really told a story today and just I don't know. SA has been insane. I love this region so much. These players are so great. I know we do have a few NA players as well, but it, it's it's like it's like an international collaboration. You know what I mean? It's so much fun. Oh, they've been really, really going crazy with it. And again, thank you for a great season. I know as we go into our, our last game and everything, yeah, big thank you once again. <sighs> Shuvi. I want you to do it this time, actually. We're going to be taking a look at the scores, but I want Shuvi to actually do it this time because, my God, do I need help. Yeah, I mean, this is gonna. This game alone is going to propel Team Oozing E-Girls all the way towards the top at the moment. I mean, they've already been in first place ever since game number three, but there we go. They are holding strong in first place right now. 176 points for them. Second place is going to be Team No Flame. Very close, I will say. You know, 41 points, nothing that can't be made up with the final game here. Third place is going to be the kids, however. So our three North American teams actually holding strong right now in top three at the moment. As our South American teams, Naragas going to be sitting in fourth place with 120. And Batacondo sitting in fifth place with 100. And Momento is going to be holding sixth at the moment with 83 points. As we go into our last and final game, game number five, the last chance for our South American teams to hold the throne in their respective region. Yeah, it's going to be hard, but I wonder if they'll be able to do it. They're going to need to have a pop-off game. Nargos is going to have to put their big boy pants on and get yep. it done. And let's see if any of the NA teams are going to be able to do it as well, because this is going to be a close one. As we said before, it's going to be really, really close. I, I don't even know. I'm just wondering, actually... What the? F I want to see the final scoreboard already. Do we have the script written, Shuvi, yet? Or is that? Uh, oh, no, my bad. Actually, hold on. That was meant for, uh, you know, for later. But I'm curious to see what these players are going to be able to do, what the picks are going to be like. Maybe we see a few of these teams go back to what they were accustomed to before. I know we had Mementos actually completely switch over from the Barber that they were running, Atreja, now going on to the Carla of all things, which surprised me. I did like their comp a little bit. We had the Glowing Isaac as well, which I think was pretty memorable. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I was a big fan of the Glowing Isaac. But let's see what these teams are going to be bringing out for Game 5. Um, is there anything else you're kind of looking at in this game other than, I know we talk about compositions a lot, but, you know, macro play, micro, what are you going to be looking at? See, personally, for me, I do wonder where Team No Flame is going to go for their first cemetery, uh, first tree of life, sorry, yeah. not cemetery, because that has kind of been the deciding factor in regards to whether or not they've actually had a very successful game. The two games that they really didn't do too well were the two games that they were completely denied these objectives in the early stages of the game. One was, of course, during game number two, where they were knocked out completely early over in Temple by getting sandwiched, but game three was also a little bit of an iffy one where they were denied every single objective that they wanted to go to whether mm -hmm. it was the tree of life whether it was a battle zone like they were denied for a majority of so the much. stages of the game 
Now, their game sense and the way that they stay caught up in the game by, you know, through hunts, throughout hunting, throughout picking people off is still there. But the fact of the matter is, if you don't have the items to back that up and the other teams do, then you're still going to struggle in the long run. So I do wonder for Team No Flame, especially where they're going to try to go for this objective of that Tree of Life. And I think they've succeeded in kind of throwing off a lot of our South American teams because now they're the ones in a little bit of a limbo guessing and checking where Team uh, No Flame is but by the time you're already guessing and checking eternal return is a game of efficiency you have to be there at the right time and if you aren't that's where the problem starts to begin yeah and now i'm curious we actually have a very curious change sunshine is gonna be going on to the lennox we haven't seen that all evening yet that's what i'm looking forward to mentos actually going back to their original comp like i kind of said i was curious if they were going to actually stick with the carla comp but they are going to go back to barbara as far as our other teams kind of staying the same yeah, no, this is kind of interesting because we're seeing um, the, what is it, the augment swap ups from all of these guys. Link is actually deciding to swap off of the frailty and go for the vampiric bloodline here instead. And Juni now is going to be the one sitting on the frailty. Now, this is kind of interesting, but at the same time, I get it. And I do understand the reason why, because as I mentioned earlier, I think it was during game number one. Juni is not the type of person to like completely go all in into a fight at the beginning. It's actually link but we've seen what happens when link actually ends up popping the frailty a little bit too prematurely because they get their full combo off they don't have access to it for the rest of the fight that frailty is so good even post yeah. 0.80 that you do need access to that if you're especially running an amplification focused team like momentos is you need to kind of pump out the damage while the frailty is there so I like the fact that they're putting it onto Juni here. Link is going to be very consistent with the Vampiric Bloodline. They've been rotating through their skills very well throughout some of these fights as well. So I do like that change on the side of Team Mementos. Yeah, no, I completely agree. I'm excited to watch them again. I was a huge fan of that Barbara earlier. You know me. I, I do I do love my Barbara. I love my kind of... I don't want to say off-meta because, you know, off-meta in this game, it's kind of weird. It doesn't really <laughs> yeah. exist. Like, off-meta doesn't exist. But characters that are kind of less picked you know what i mean we love our barbaras we love our martinas uh maybe maybe one day vanya will be allowed you know maybe <laughs> in the next year it's it's just a great i, I would have loved if vanya was in this tournament but of course vanya a little little too early she needs a little bit more time in the oven but um other than that i would have loved to see leon as well oh uh, that's, that's true character. yeah leon yeah. I, I believe is allowed if i'm not mistaken i can't remember yeah. but uh yeah i would maybe. have loved to seen her uh, i don't know at this point maybe it is maybe it isn't but you know leon's been a lot of fun uh, to watch as well um a, a few other characters i'm surprised we haven't seen something i know a lot of people love irem you know but uh no no irem out here unfortunately I'll be honest with you, uh, Iram has been so wonky for me, I feel like, in team <laughs> modes. I haven't really seen her succeed too often, considering how, um, uh, how, how should I say this, considering how you would think that character operates in a team's environment, considering how much, you know, crowd control she has that's actually really big in regards to the AoE, how much damage she has, how much rotation of skills she has. She hasn't really seen too, too much success, I feel like, in the long run, so kind of interesting there. A bit of a uncharacter miss, uh, characteristic miss there from Seven Strike going over onto Atresia, and this is actually going to hit your team a lot more. Cool. You're going to get taken down, and wow, okay, you, I, I feel like they're trying to make up for the ping, but they're over over making up for it and it's gonna cost goal his life this time around we saw earlier that i think it was christian missing a first attack down in pond or something like that it was really weird they're missing a lot of these skills trying to overestimate and over um kind of overcompensate that? yeah yeah overcompensate there is the word for the ping diff that they're trying to face but a little bit too much on their side at the moment yeah, I know the feeling, though, especially, you know, having played in Korea a little bit, you know, it is kind of difficult, you know, especially I get to play on, what is it, 210 ping, something like that. But here we go. Here's a fight that I'm looking forward to. We have Mbatu Kondo going to be the ones to take on No Flame as they are here in Temple. We're going to get a repeat. We get to see our Lennox fight as well. There's a Yuki ultimate going out. Let's see. Frankie and them are trying to go crazy right now. Unfortunately, Anjit is going to be the first to go down. a not falls as well, though. It looks like the rest here of Bafakondo is a little bit too low to keep fighting this. Sunshine stacking that Vampiric. 
They're trying to revive Anod right now, but it looks like Vatikondo is just going to be getting on out of here right now. Still a nice fight from them, but uh-oh. Guess what, Shuvi? They're not done yet. Mementos is pulling up now. <laughs> oh, no. This is not what you want to see, unfortunately. And I think that means No Flame is going to have to get on out of here. I didn't. They actually did get away with the tree, it looks like. So great job towards them. We see the Glacial Ice already built. Are going to have Mementos actually going after them is the question. Seems like they do want to at the moment, but Frankie's the target that they end up finding here. It's fine for Team No Flame to actually lose Frankie at the moment because, again, the Tree of Life was already given over towards the, the Fiora. They still don't want to lose a member. They will be able to run away with it for now. Trying to get stacks is going to be Martin at the moment. Four stacks on their ultimate is what they are sitting on at the moment. They're not going to be able to buy themselves another one at this point over in hospital, unfortunately. They will get taken down. The pace of the Martina is really going to matter right now, and four is very low according to Martin's standards at the moment. Kai is also feeling a little bit of pain as he's going to have to use his ultimate to, to get himself away too. I'm just trying to chase this down. Like You can see teams being very desperate to get these kills at the moment, because each individual one of these points really matter in the long run as we actually do have Juni oh, the on the range. Map. Asia getting taken down here as well. What is going on in this game at the moment, sir? Everybody's dying. I have no idea. Kai's on the run too. Just what is happening? It is a bloodbath. Everybody wants each other. Everybody's trying to get these points in for the last game. I know it's the last game, but oh my goodness, yeah, holy lord, there's Martin going down as well. Fortunate there. Oh my goodness a lot of damage out there on to a superior i believe that was with a bullseye from lily petal if the kids right below them as well another bullseye being charged up gonna hit christy and just uh, take it about a quarter of their life right there pork chop gonna send lily petal back oh man what a game oh no go goes right down like it's nothing that is unfortunate and now no flames here it looks like to clean up the rest of this fight holy pedal holding that bullseye trying to see if they can get a pick but seven strike is going to pull them right back in that's oozing e girls down in the forest battle zone no flame now trying to take down the rest of the kids ghouls down they're going to be after christian right now seven strike currently trying to take down superior but a great shield there is actually going to shield them but oh man what a crazy battle zone uh, dude, it's so hard to lock down Superior, man. The Sua is unstoppable, especially on the Don Quixote. It's just so tough to deal with, especially as a Nathapon. And, you know, and at that point, I think, like, I think Christian was, uh, I think Seven was just trying to get as many kills as possible. They were just feeding his weapon level at this point because there's just nothing that a Nathapon can really do facing up against the Sua. There's just way too many crowd control removals and immunity that he had, that she has access to. So, cool things happening there over on 14 No Flame, being able to jump on top of a third party easy ass pie for that team as a treasure gonna be able to pick up yet another kill for himself here it is gonna be martin falling down i do wonder how many stacks he has but another two just picked up for himself should mean that this martina is gonna be pretty okay i think in the long run they should be able to get themselves their broadcast form best case scenario in the next week or two exactly 45 seconds until night two which means the trees the meteorites are all going to be up that means a little hopefully bit of success coming martin's way we love to see the broadcast get online as always uh, especially uh, uh it, oh wait actually more stacks there we go there's the broadcast there we go that's what we were talking about shuvi now martin at this point yeah at this point you might as well just die and be up for the next objective you know what i mean it is going to be 32 seconds going to be about 10 seconds late there to night number two but that's okay broadcast has been achieved hi yeah yeah what a weird game for i know game right? Talk, right just what a I weird game that's what you yeah, say. I feel as if all of the games that we've had so far, like, this is funny, right? Because it's very reminiscent of the game that we had, for, uh, the compositions that we had for game number one, because even in Batu Kondo, well, actually, sorry, it's not going to be game one, right? Because Batu Kondo was running like a, a Nadine and a Leon composition, but it's very kind of 
thoughtful and remnant of that as Link can they get taken down here first. Juni will actually manage to knock down Sunshine. This is going to be accepted speeches all over the place right now. As I think, oh, this is not looking good for Chiron. He's going to try to run away from Atresia. Juni trying to chase down on just as much as possible here as well. Red Carpet's actually pretty good on the side of Chiron, but he's going to have to do more than that to run away as Atresia still chasing this down right now. He wants the kill against Chiron. He wants the points right now. Does he have access to it? Yes, he does. Using that laser over on towards that turret should be enough damage for him to get that. And that means to me a 2 for I think one trait there for Mbatu Kondo as well as Mementos. They're just kind of training kills at this point one after another. And that should be okay for these guys as we're slowly but surely coming over onto the eve of day number three. No more reses in our final game here, sir. Yeah, it's gonna be fun though. This is where things start to really get spicy. And Atreja, their Barbara is looking so good right now. It is crazy. We also have our battle zones being Temple and Chapel here for day number three. And I wonder what teams are actually gonna be fighting for this. It's gonna possibly be close. Yeah, there's Chiron fully killed, of course. They will be coming right back up right in front of Nargas, actually. Hold on, there we go. I'm not able to get the slow into anybody right now. We have 30 seconds until the battle zone actually starts. Are they going to decide to fight beforehand? What's going to happen here? No flame also as well. Mementos, they are all finding each other. Lake, oh, that's a lot of damage going on to Superior. Now Anos, the target for Mementos, will be going down. Let's see. No flame. Are they going to be able to go down here? No, Frankie's actually going to just destroy Link right there. Juni also now possibly a target for Superior. Frankie's going to be sitting in the back. This is going to be really close. Very nice bat skill there by Atreja. Now going to be playing around the turret completely. But I think that's Atreja going down as well. And no flame able to turn the fight. Judy actually going to try and 1v2 here. Hold on. I don't know. Oh, there's the play dead. But Wait a second. Really close. Hold on. Going to revive. Is it going to be enough though? Is it Frankie going to be able to do it? Mementos gets taken down. No flame is going to be flaming them here in game number five. My God. Dude, that is so brutal for Mementos. They had such a good fight, such a good initiation. A lot of damage turned over onto Superior as soon as he went in. But it's not going to matter. Sua just way too good at getting out. The damage wasn't locked down on towards that character at all. And that means standing right in front of the Omega is going to be no flame. We have a couple of rats hanging around the corner here as well. Anjit sitting inside of that little cubby for himself. Completely split away from his team, but... I mean, at this point, what really options do you have? Anjic, do not walk out yet, man. You cannot afford to do that, especially with their team so far away at the moment. Although I think a couple of battle zones have already been finished here, right? I think the only three teams actually taking away battle zones in this game right now. Nargos will be the one to take away the one over in Temple. As No Flame picking up the Omega with the Force Core. Ah, uh, dude, this is just looking tougher and tougher and tougher for our South American teams as North America is seeming to reign supreme over this region. Yeah, it's a little bit hard for our SA teams right now, but there is still time left in this game. But man... No Flame is so far ahead right now, Shuvi, and Anjits is just going to be chilling right in there by themselves. That's, uh, that's, that's a little bit rough for them right now, but I'm sure they will be able to meet up with the rest of their team, of course. But man, I'm actually just wondering if No Flame, or if Oozing Eagles is going to be able to hold onto that first place lead. Right now, No Flame with their eight kills. Oh no, unfortunately, Anjits going to get caught out here. I really think the rest of Mbappe Kondo should have possibly just TP'd on right over to him and walked with him. That is unfortunate. You have no idea what's going on in Avenue, so that is really, really sad for them. Yeah, that's going to be the end, most likely, for Mbappe Kondo's at least reign of terror, at least on their end right now, because they were doing pretty good throughout the course of the game, but with Anjit's dead, that's way too much that I think Sunshine has to do up in the front lines. It's going to be very difficult for Lennox to try to deal with all the Sua's damage, to try to deal with all of the Sylvia's trying to, you know, sustain their own teammates up. This is going to be a tough one, but we do still have a couple of teams hanging oh, around. Cool. Yeah, you don't want to eat that bullseye. That was just, well, like a simple 1,000 damage there from Lily Petal dealt onto both Leon oh, as well bit. as <laughs> Kai's. Yeah, exactly. It's just, uh, looking tougher and tougher and tougher as we go throughout the game, but... Wickling spawns up, and guess what team is the team standing on top of it? It's going to be Team No Flame. It's uh -oh. reminiscent of 
North American tournaments as they're the only ones sitting on top of this objective. They're going to try to peel away from this objective as much as possible because we do have the kids hanging around here too. But look at how much of a dominating force that they have sitting on top of this. The pressure coming down from No Flames a little bit too much. The kids just completely back away. Yeah, and it looks like nobody wants to contest that at all, which I'm kind of surprised about. Just letting No Flame get it for free more than anything. A little bit odd there, but I'm sure a lot of these teams are kind of scared of them. Like you said, the pressure is insane. Oh. Here we go. This is going to be... Uh-oh, guess what? Oh. Nargas is here. Nargas is going to be doing so much damage as well. The play dead for the Jenny. Unfortunately, Chiron will be going down. Now it's up to Sunshine to try and actually do anything here. There's the EMP as well. <laughs> but yeah, this is the end. Emboss Gondo, our second full team to go down. Only four remaining here. Uh, Nargos, uh, Nargos against North America at this point. This team right here has had so much success for themselves up against North American teams, but this is where they need to finish it if they want to finish strong for South America. The only team being alive in the home region, and I'm pretty sure all the South American players in the chat are cheering for these guys because Nargos has been doing an incredible series of work throughout the course of tonight. They just need to do a little bit more, maybe finish the game with that first place spot get a couple more kills for themselves and end the tournament here happy for themselves they're trying to look up against the Nook team right now losing e-girls is the one they're looking at at the moment lily petal hits a huge bullseye yet again these players just constantly grouping up making it easy for lily petal to hit these skills and they're trying to chase this down now the garden reverse does come through so full fury on the side of leon at the moment they do want to chase this down they were looking for an angle onto lily petal but it's so difficult for these two as they just constantly get pummeled by these bullseyes yeah, it's really hard. Like you said, A not actually TPing in. Oh my goodness, that was a close one. But I think this is going to be the deciding factor right here. Who's ever going to be able to get this? And A not gets poked out again. But I don't think Oozing Eagles wants anything else right now. Knowing that Team No Flame does have that wick line, they will back off from them right now. But I guess it's going to just everybody. Something's in Uptown. You know, something's in the water, Shuvi. Uh oh. But guess what? Nargos is going to get engaged upon by Superior there. They're going to decide to go in. There's the EMP out as well as the big Martina ultimate. Unfortunately, we do see Martin going to be the first one to go down. A dot now topping, trying to get on top of guys, I should say. My apologies. Leon now is well going to go down. That's Nargas just going down like it's nothing at all. No flame. Just cutting through them. Another 12 points. They're catching up to oozing e-girls. Dude, this is such a brutal end there for Nargos, though. I think Martin actually got crowd control locked because they dashed straight back into an Odyssey, straight into a knockup, into a bunch of Sylvia skills, too. Like, you can't get out of that as a Martina, no matter how much sustainability you have, no matter how many stacks of the broadcast you get. If you're locked down in crowd control, you will get knocked down eventually. And after that, there's just no damage left on the side of Nargos. It was a good run for South America, but it seems like for the final game here, we are going to see three North American teams fighting it out it is going to be either school hotel or beach as our final zones Woo. we'll figure that out in about 10 seconds here as yet again bullseye still reigning oh supreme as no flame their last chance to make a big in their final school. game here and this game so far is the perfect setup that they do have it is oh. going to be beach for I'm the so final sad. zone in a very open area this is actually not the greatest at the moment for lily petal because the amount of zone control that nadine has over in beach is very very limited due to how open that final zone is so i'm so sad i thought we were gonna have school and i would have said it was gonna be three school final zones and two forest ones that was so close there <laughs> we almost had it but unfortunately like you said now lily petal has to find a way if they want to keep losing e-girls as lead sitting in first it's gonna be hard Will they be able to do it, though? So many kills going out here for Team No Flame. This is going to be hard. There's those bullseyes still hitting like a truck. 
Nico, Nico the problem Sushi here is that it's yeah. not force, man. Like, you can't close off a complete entrance. Oh, it's they're doing it again. Oh, they're doing no. it again. Look at the timers on the side of Oozing Eagles right now. Nico Nico Sushi has to burn most of her gauge here, trying to go back into the beach area. Thankfully, Sylvia can get that gauge back up really, really quickly. But look at up. this. They're putting, they're being pushed straight into a corner at the moment. Lily Petal getting taken down very low. Her timer is not looking good at all here either. Oh, my God. Look at Team No Flame at the moment. But look at the side of team the kids at the moment too they're trying to poke away everyone as much as possible no flame has plenty of timer so they can get themselves away oh Uzma get her gets himself away too but niku niku sushi stuck in a corner she's gonna get taken down and it is completely looking doomed for oozing eagles as uzma left to pick up the scraps of that team no flame still alive yeah alive too a lot of timer on this player on this team as well I mean, look at this, man. It is just tough. Yeah, Nuzma's going to be sitting in the corner right there, and now we're going to have a fight between the kids and No Flame. Of course, let's see who's going to be able to do it. Uzma oh looking for a third pretty God. here as well. Ghoul goes down. Christian's down. Seven Strike about to go down as well. Let's see, and that is going to be it there for the kids. But that honestly is great because Oozing E-Girls now secures second place. But is it going to be enough, Shuvi? I don't think it is. Goodness gracious, man. Zero overall kills for Oozing E-Girls. 17 for No Flame. What? That's not looking too good at all, Shuvi. It's going to be close. It's going to be really close those points they needed for uh, just about a little over 40 i believe to catch up it's gonna be close man it's gonna be really close but we're gonna have to find out who wins it because i believe no flame if they win it that's gonna be a second region for them isn't it yes indeed oh, they boy. are you know this is what a story, honestly, throughout the entire course of Season 8, we saw the dominant force that was No Flame just kind of ripping yeah. through tournaments left and right and left and right. And they came into the South American tournament second seed as well, right? They had, I think it yeah. was like 10 point difference between them and Mementos going into our series here for the finals. And they definitely showed South America that, you know, North America is definitely here to play in the South American finals. So well done yeah. over on towards them throughout the entire course of the night. Of course, we don't know what the final results results are yet, but it's looking really solid for the side of No Flame as, you know, again, ending their final game with 17 kills in first place. Like that's a massive performance for these guys to end it off. Yeah, exactly. And just it goes to show you, even with the ping, our NA boys are ready to come out and play anytime as you were talking about. We are just going to be waiting on that final scoreboard, of course. But man, what a great way to end off our Lumia Marathon Shuvi. No more games. All regions are now done. NA Europe and South America. That wow, what a crazy season it's been for these Western regions, huh? I mean, dude, I really like the circuit format that they did for ERM during Season 7. I'm yeah. so glad that they ended up bringing it over onto the international regions as well. Now, there are small things that we could still tweak about the entire format. But there. the fact of the matter is, we had it. And you know what? Uh, season 7 for ERM, even in Korea too, was one of those seasons that I also consider kind of like the test phase for a tournament. Yeah. For the tournament uh, side of things and look where ERM is now it's absolutely amazing at the moment a lot of small adjustments that are needed for the tournament itself to make sure that it is game friendly and healthy for the tournament yeah. side happening because they already got most of the tournament sided things figured out for season eight and it's going to improve even more so if you do have another set of these circuits during season nine I am so so excited for yeah. it because we're not going to get that much mechanical changes for the game itself as far as I know during season nine it should be for the most part, very similar to what we have in Season 8. And this season, I will definitely say, has been, in my opinion, the most fun season I have ever had casting Eternal Return because of how the yeah. game mechanics worked in conjunction with the tournaments. Should we mean you now this month? It'll be two years for us. You know what I mean? We've been doing this. It's been a long time, and I definitely think it has been... <clears throat> the most fun we've ever had casting together. But Shuvi, right now, 
Let's take it over, guys, to our final scoreboard and your first place victors coming out with 219 points. Team No Lame taking both North and South America, both continents for themselves. Oozing E-Girls coming out in second now with 192 points. The kids in third with 154. Fourth place will be Nargas with 140. And Batucando in fifth with 122. And Momentos in sixth with 108 points. Congratulations again to Team No Flame. Wow. Oh my goodness. What a crazy set of games there for them. But yeah, a successful last game is able to gonna it's it's gonna throw them into first place to be able to allow them to win this tournament. Congratulations again to them. This just goes to show that you know, even if even with pain diff, sometimes as long as you're able to play what you want to play in the way that you want to, it can definitely work out. And as you said, I'm gonna reciprocate the same thing. Congratulations to Team No Flame. And yep. uh, surely we're gonna be getting a uh, video from Superior coming out talking about how they won two of the uh, season finals, most likely, right? Yada, yada, yada. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll see some stuff coming out in the near future, most likely, from those uh, players on Team No Flame because they definitely deserve the amount of work and effort that they put into season eight. They definitely. Yeah deserve the result at this point so again congratulations to those three players well done on an absolutely incredible season for yourselves yeah exactly congrats from myself to once again and shuvi man that is the end for us i can't believe it like we said the lumia marathon it was a great time and i have to say big thank you this goes for all regions to all the production staff from every single tournament involved all of our tournament organizers big thanks to nimble neuron for just hosting this entire thing as well and letting myself and shuvi cast it was a fantastic time overall thank you to all the players through your for your hard work throughout these last few months it has been fantastic to see these players grow just not as players but as people as well it has been such a fun time and man guys don't forget to leave your feedback if anything about the lumia marathon you know for next season so it can be improved of course we still have more er action this month erm is going to be next weekend as well the erm finals if you're interested in the korean esports side at all hope you guys get to see that but shuvi final words for you as well my friend no, that is going to be it from me. Thank you all of you guys in the chat also for coming out to each individual in our, one of our events. I think uh, Lumia Marathon for the most part has been an absolutely amazing success considering how kind of like yeah. it's in the infancy phase of the uh, way that tournaments are going to be run most likely. Most likely. I, we don't know either. Uh, for the international regions. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this kind of format because I personally have been enjoying it over on the Korean side of things. Again, a big fan of this circuit style format. So hopefully we can either uh, develop further from this, uh, from the style of the circuit format, or if this doesn't you know, work out in the end, hopefully we can develop even more when it comes to the international region competitive because this season, definitely we saw a lot more advancements in regards to how teams organize themselves. And that's something that as, us as casters always want to see as the game develops. Great final words there for you, my friend. And guys, I believe that is going to be it for us here over on the casting desk. One big thank you again. And for now, guys... We'll see you on Lumi Island next time. But until then, bye, everybody. See ya.